Cinderella's back. Northwestern <laughs> wins this one, outscoring him. I think Iowa, they need a big win here. Drew Tate, mm -hmm. I think, gets it done. I like the Hawkeyes. Welcome on a perfect November Saturday for some morning Big Ten football. ESPN College Football presented by Nokia. From Ryan Field, Evanston, Illinois. Our matchup today, the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Northwestern Wildcats with identical marks of five and three. And one minute to kick off in what will be the 67th meeting in this series. An Iowa dominated series 45 18 and three ties. The Big Ten could not possibly be more wide open. There are six teams within a game of each other in the loss column, including both of these. Northwestern or Iowa one will go to four and two and remain a game back as the possibilities are literally almost endless in the Big Ten. Welcome to Evanston. Dave Barnett, Chris Spielman. We'll hear momentarily from Rob Stone on the sideline. This really amounts to an elimination contest because the winner still has their Big Ten championship hopes alive. That will not be the case for the loser, which will also still have to worry about bowl eligibility, and there are some fascinating matchups today. Well, absolutely. When you take a look at Northwestern's offense, for example, it's led by maybe one of the most prolific quarterbacks in Big Ten history and Brett Basnay. He can run the football, and he makes every throw that there is to make. And one of the reasons why they're mo more efficient is that young man right there, true freshman Tyrell Sutton. Powerfully built, small in stature, big, powerful runner. They're watching today. He's exciting. So what do you do when you have two studs on an offense? you got to get two studs on a defense. Well, Iowa has two studs on their defense, starting with their linebackers, Chad Greenway and Abdul Hodge. Why they're so good, both of them can play the run and the pass just as equally as well. We are brought to you today in high definition by Phillips. On a relatively cool overcast Saturday, Northwestern has won the toss and defers. As usual, Iowa will receive, and Herb Grigsby and Albert Young are back deep for the Hawkeyes. And underway as Young will return it. And knocked off his feet at the 23. So from that point, after the usual for Kirk Ferentz and Ken O'Keefe, their offensive coordinator, starting on offense now for the 72nd time in the 82 games in seven years, they've had Ferentz as the head coach. And Drew Tate, the junior from Baytown, Texas. Iowa with the luxury of the first team all Big Ten quarterback and a returning starter at that position for the first time in six years. And right to the air on first down. And they'll have another first at the 36-yard line as Andy Brodell gathers in just his third reception of the season. Our starting lineups brought to you by Nivea for men with Bush in the backfield with Young. Chandler, their favorite receiver at tight end, and Malloy getting the start for Clinton Solomon. Grigsby at the other wide receiver. Solomon had a mispractice Monday because of the funeral of his grandfather. He will play, just not starting today. On the ground, Albert Young, the leading rusher, turned away as he nears the 40. And the offensive line that will do the blocking for Young today includes up front Gates, Jones, the coach's son, Brian Ferentz, Elgin, and Yonda. Iowa with the number six offense in the conference right in the middle. At about 410 yards per game. Ferentz. Senior, one of five father-son combinations in Division 1A football this year. Well, we were talking to Coach before the game. He said it's been a great joy coaching his son and watching him grow within the program. Tate, look left, now goes back right. And another first down to midfield. Rodell came in today with two catches for the season. And in barely a minute, he's already got two more today. Northwestern defensively. Up front with Mims, Cofield, Schultz, and Kane. Linebackers. We're going to call the name McGarrigal maybe 20, 25 times today. One of the top tacklers in the country and six away from the career lead for the Wildcats. And in the secondary, Cole Henderson, Tarver, and Battle. Expecting a high-scoring game because Northwestern defensively has issues. They are the bottom-ranked defense in Division One. 
That was a pickup of seven off tackle for Albert Young, the sophomore from Morristown, New Jersey, into the secondary, and the strong safety, Frederick Tarver, on the tackle. You know, as the coach coming in, visiting uh, offensive power like Northwestern, what's the best defense you can have? And that's a good offense and a ball-controlling offense. Right now, I was doing what they want. They're running a three-step passing game versus a zone defense. Then they'll come and hit him with a zone running play to control the football and get positive yards. Two tight ends on second and two. And again, Young, first down as he crosses the 40. And let's check in with a third member of our crew, Rob Stone. Well, Dave, back in the battle days for the Iowa football program, Coach Kirk Ferentz came up with the philosophy that his team was going to be aggressive and attack from the get-go. And that means attacking from the coin toss. Literally, coming into today's game, Iowa has started 71 of the 81 games first on offense. If they win the coin toss, deferring the kick is not an option, something other programs don't agree with. Northwestern won it today. They deferred. Well, the outscoring the opposition numbers staggering for Iowa in the first quarter this year. 91 to 20 outscoring the opposition in the first quarter. And another grab for Brodell. They have scored on their first possession five times in their first eight games. 91 to 20. Makes you wonder, Chris, why more coaches don't adapt uh, Kirk Ferentz's attitude about Well, it used to be that way until a few years ago when defense, everybody thought defense would establish a tempo, but I've been one like Coach Ferentz who thinks that the offense can establish a tempo, especially the offensive drive they put together right now. And they're setting a the tone for the football game. Well, three catches, 39 yards. He had two for 23 for the season before today. As again, Young inside the 20 at the 18 and the first stop of the day. Far from the last for Tim McGarrigal, the senior middle linebacker from Chicago. It's interesting to watch what I was doing, and, and you see Drew Tate and from the beginning of the year to Drew Tate of now. I'm watching his progression, and his understanding of the offense keeps growing, but the biggest thing that he has right now is confidence because every throw he throws with authority and on the mark. Three for three, all to Brodell. This time Young tries right tackle and is... Going to be stopped a yard shy of the first at the 15. Area. Another stop in the secondary by Frederick Tarver. We were talking to Coach O'Keefe before before the game down on the field. And he said, Coach, you might have to put 50 up today. And, and Northwestern understands that. Northwestern knows that they struggle defensively. 117th in the country. And they have to make sure that they get down in this red zone being Iowa. You've got to score points against this offense. Two tight end set. On third and a little less than one. And with a second effort, Young is right on the yellow line for the first down. You see Roach come in from his linebacker spot and has a shot at getting Young. Right here is Roach. Watch him. He's going to have a shot at getting Young in the backfield. He does a nice job of getting penetration, avoiding the fullback's block, but he has to wrap him up. And you see Albert Young. One of the things I love to see from running backs is continual leg drive. Albert Young, if he did get the first down, was because of a second effort and always moving his feet and falling forward. Nick Roach, the second leading tackler for Northwestern on that stop. He has 52 for the year coming in. That is less than half the total of their leader, McGargo. And by half the length of the ball, another Hawkeye first down. This deep into the season, Chris, I've never seen a number like that. McGargo, 109 tackles. The next highest total for any of his teammates, 52. You know, we talked to Greg Colby, the defensive coordinator for Northwestern. A lot of their scheme is to funnel things back into Tim. Tim started his career out as a weak side linebacker. The last two years, he's played the middle linebacker spot where he does have a chance to get on a little bit more action. Iowa almost perfect in the red zone. Best of the Big Ten. And the 10th play of the drive has Young finally surrounded as he tries to cut the corner and hit first by Herschel Henderson, the senior free safety from Houston. And what Coach Colby's doing is he's going to an eight-man front. That's why Herschel Henderson, a safety, is, a, is able to make the tackle at the line of scrimmage for two yards beyond because he's up basically playing a linebacker. It's a little bit more comfortable for him to do that because don't forget now the field is shrunk, so there's not a lot of room to work with if you're Iowa if you want to throw the football. A one back on second down at eight. That back being Young. And he'll try the same side with a better block this time. Touchdown, Tony Moyaki. 
The second tight end clearing the way for Albert Young's sixth touchdown on the ground this year. Yeah, you watch Scott Chandler here too does a great job of hooking his man right there Chandler see Chandler's hands are inside they chip up to the next level and Albert Young has a nose for the goal line but anytime you can get the chip on the defensive end seal him inside go to the next level you got to play they had a play and for the sixth time this season the Hawkeyes have points on their opening drive Kyle Schlicker makes it seven to nothing. Scott Chandler, their leading receiver, used strictly for a blocking sensation on that first drive for the Hawkeyes. One of the best smelling parking lots anywhere in college football. It made us hungry, didn't it? You can almost smell it through your TV screen. And lots of Hawkeyes have made the trip. Maybe as many as 10,000 expected here in Evanston today. Happy so far. They had the opening kick, and they took it 11 plays and 78 yards in 4 minutes and 55 seconds. 7 to nothing, Hawkeye. Schlicker. Very little, if any, win today. Gerard Hamlet returns it for the Wildcats. Not for much, though, as he's ganged up on at the 18. And from there, we'll see Brett Bazinet and the Northwestern offense. Best passing unit in the Big Ten because the senior from Arlington Heights has had his career season. Working on his master's, taking three grad classes in communication studies. The NCAA's leading active passer. He comes in with an outside shot today. He just goes absolutely nuts of getting over the 10,000-yard career mark here today. They start with Tyrell Sutton. Stop for a loss, trying the middle. Our starting lineups presented again by Nivea for men. And along with Bazinet, Sutton, the freshman sensation from Akron, Ohio. Cobb at a tight end. And Thompson, Fillmore, and Herbert lead the group of Wildcat receivers up front. It's Theory, Tripodi, Matthews starting in Joel Belding's spot. He had a tough week against Michigan. Keenan and Streif on the right side. Out of the gun. On play action all day. Bazinet looks up. Nobody on the left side. That doesn't last long. Hit by Mike Kumpel, linebacker at the 25. I was defense. Lines up this way. Up front. You have your Webema, Kroll, King, and Madison. And just as is the case with McGargal, Hodge and Greenway's names are going to be uttered 20, 25 times a day, probably. Two of the top tacklers in the country with a secondary of Johnson, Merrick, Pascal, and Allen. Chad Greenway tied for first in the conference with McGargal, just under 14 tackles per game. And as the Wildcats come up for a third and two flag. Well, interesting on that last play, something to maybe look forward is illegal snap. Number 62, fence. Five yard penalty remains third down. The pass protection for Northwestern was outstanding, and that's something that for them to be sexful, uh, successful today, that has to continue. And I will find different ways to put pressure. They'll come with Greenway and Hodge quite a bit on their zone blitz package. Randy Walker can break a tie for fourth all-time Northwestern victories with Gary Barnett today. As again, Bazinet well protected, going deep and overthrown. Intended for Kim Thompson at the 40 of the Hawkeye. I'll tell you what happened, Thompson stopped running. Thompson slowed down. Bazinet was thrown to a spot. You saw Thompson kind of slow down. Thompson gets a nice green release, and he gets behind the safety right here in the corner. He slows down. If he keeps running, he slows down to jump for the ball. He keeps running. He's dancing on the Wildcats in the end zone. Bazinet apparently trying to make that very point as the Cats go three and out, and Ryan Peterson comes on to punt. Boy. Off his instep. That one will travel only to the 40-yard line. And uh, they changed punting assignments just before getting that one off. Larshide with the shank. And Iowa already up seven. 
Lighthouse on the coast of fog and shrouded Lake Michigan. After a 19 yard shake by Slade Larshai, who had only punted one time all season, the Hawk got a start from the Wildcat 40 and Young. Robert Young, the ball carrier. Up the middle for four. Let's check in for the first. Yeah. All right, Reese, as are the Hawkeyes here. Second and sixth throw. Herb Grigsby with a first down. 26-yard line. McGargle immediately wraps him up. Now, the reason for the short field is the shank on just the second kick of the season by Slade Larshot. Well, this is planned directional pump by Northwestern. Actually, Randy Walker, head coach, has put this in that they, they don't want any form of return, so they've been working on their directional punting in practice. And Thursday, they were working on it more efficient, but you got to be able to do it when the game's on the line. First and ten. Hawkeyes with another two tight end set. That served them very well on their opening possession. As did Albert Young. It's for a comeback angle. Runs into Herschel Henderson at the 21. More on that punt decision from Rob. Well, Dave, uh, the punting situation has been unstable to say the least here lately at Northwestern. Coach Walker and his staff have been kind of shuffling the punters back and forth. So, you know, uh, Ryan Peterson is listed on our two deep as the starter, quote unquote, as a punter. But I don't think that really means anything. I think they're 1A and 1A, if you know what I mean. And Peterson has taken no warm up punts. So who's to say if he's to go back in or not? But they are unsettled there. Interesting. His number is not that bad. He's about 41 or so yards on average for the year. Young has a tackle broken and has a touchdown. 21 yards, Albert Young already with two scores on as many possessions for the Hawkeye. Watch Tim McGargle right here. He makes a living making tackles. And the one thing that happens here, he's got to come in and attack. See, he stays too deep. They're able to chip off on him, and when you're able to do that, and you're seven yards down the field, Albert Young has too much room to work, makes one move, and is out the door. Another extra point. Up and good by Kyle Schlicker. It's a great block by Mike Elgin. 11 carries already, 69 yards, both touchdowns for sophomore Albert Young. Two drives, two Albert Young touchdowns for Iowa. And Young well on his way to his fifth straight 100-yard game. Iowa down the first quarter, 105-20. Yeah, well, that tells me that they do some good work during practice and preparation. And they know how to come out and game plan and attack that weakness that they see. Anytime you have that big a discrepancy, first quarter scoring, that's a reflection of coaching. Rear touchdowns, eight and nine for Young. Very high Schlicker kick down to the four. Hamlet. And tonight on ESPN HD. And if you like defense, get your front row seat because you're going to see it tonight on ESPN. It's going to be awesome defense. Virginia Tech first in scoring, second total defense. Miami first in total and pass defense, third in scoring. How could you have a better matchup? Sliding grab made at the 30-yard line by Ross Lane. Another Reese Davis. Michigan State, the only offense averaging more yards per game in the Big Ten than Northwestern. They've been stymied on their first series, and Sutton hit at the 33 by Marcus Pascal. The Iowa secondary may be missing senior corner Javon Johnson for the rest of the day with a hamstring. This return is questionable. And that's the active leader in college football for career interceptions we're talking about there with 16. And a three-year starter, the Hawkeyes, may have to do without the rest of the day against this prolific passing attack. On the delay, Sutton, really not fooling anybody. Give it the 33 by Mike Humpel down to Rob Stone. 
Well, Dave, these early leads, not always a good thing. I spoke with some sports psychologists and mental conditioning coaches this week, and they told me ideally you want to be in what they call the zone of optimal functioning. If you score early, it's kind of like that sugar rush. You go high, which means you're going to have that fall eventually sooner than later. Your peak performance relies on what they call a medium level of arousal. Each team has a particular level where they perform most effectively. Players, coaches must define that level and try their best to maintain it. Sutton on the swing pass, stopped a couple of yards shy again by Humple, joined by Adam Shada in for the injured Johnson. I don't know if I'd buy that. I'd say just take a killer instinct pill when you got the guy down, put your foot on his throat and bury him. There's some psychology for you. <laughs> that elusive zone of optimal <laughs> yeah. whatever. Come on, man, it's football. <laughs> you got the opponent down crushing. Well, again, Northwestern unable to move, and again, Slade Larshide, who shaped a 19 yarder on his first effort. A little bit better here, especially with a roll. Grigsby runs away, and it is killed at the 20. 42 yards that time for Larshide, thanks to the roll. I'm not remembering you as a guy that was a big reader of psycholo psychology or you know mental strategy before you took the field you, you had your own way to get ready. I, I love that Frode guy he was great but I, I, I look at it like this Dave that I, I think what's embedded in a defensive player's mind especially in an offensive player's mind if you've got an opponent down on the ground beat them down I mean you do it fair within the rules but you try to bury somebody when you have them on the ropes yeah you know it's like guys hanging on their fingertips off the building you know, instead of going and offering a hand, you go and st step on their hands. Make them fall. Pass through the hands of Matt Malloy that time. I hope my kids aren't watching, by the way. <laughs> Do as Dad says, not as he did. First tape incompletion. He was four for his first four. Three of those to Andy Brodell. So second and ten. Look at the depth of the running back now. That's a big zone running play. There it is. And Young for only two. Back to Reese Davis. And Minnesota in the same boat with these two at five and three overall. Playing for bowl eligibility today. A third and eight. And Tate with all day. Picks out his man, Grigsby. First down, more missed tackle. Grigsby to the 45 and turns what was a short pass into a 23-yard gain. Tarver missed the tackle. With Ryan Field and Evanston, Iowa and Northwestern, Dave Barnett, Chris Spielman, and Rob Stone, both 5-3. And, and uh, both looking to become bowl eligible today and stay in the race for the Big Ten title. They are 3-2. and two. Loser is out, and the loser still has to uh, work for that sixth win with only... A couple games left after today. All Iowa so far. They have outgained the Wildcats 143 to 27. And they've mixed Albert up Young, the, ball carrier. the run by Albert Young, who's got both Take Hawkeye touchdowns and the pass by Drew Tate. Yeah, the Wildcat defense, if they get him in third and eight and you're going to drop Second eight, five, you got to be able to cover the people at the sticks. And that was failure to do that by the defensive backs. They took too much depth, letting somebody get open at the sticks, and Drew Tate just throws a strike. Well, Tim McGargle came in today needing six tackles for the Northwestern career record of 504, and he's already there. Tied with Abdul Hodge, the third in the country. West pass defense. Pass is incomplete. have seen yet today, and it'll be third and five. McGargle, the senior from here in Chicago, with that pressure and with that play by Tim McGargle. the school record. Very, very good linebacker. Brings up very third instinctive. Down, five to go he's good in Iowa space. Do a lot of different things, and he's coached by that man right there, Pat Fitzgerald. Who you might think was the previous record holder is actually Chuck Kern. Fitzgerald, two time Nagurski and Bignarik winner, part of those Gary Barnett teams that turned this program 180 degrees 10 years ago, coming from nowhere to win the Big Ten and defeating his co champs the following year. Tate. One-handed Young gathers that in across midfield. Immediately blasted by Eddie Simpson. But the Wildcats finally have a defensive stop. 
was a big series for Northwestern's defense to get an opportunity. Albert Young does a good job of hauling this in, concentrating on the football. And Eddie Simpson not looking back for the ball, but securing the tackle. I'd like to see him wrap up instead of push him. But still, job well done by Eddie Simpson. Albert Young, a complete back. Can block, as you saw, can even make the one hand catches. And the punt by Andy Fenstermaker into the end zone. 49, and then only 29. This afternoon, ABC's regional college football featuring the surprisingly big matchup. Very few pictured Wisconsin Penn State deciding things in the Big Ten. Also, 330, Missouri, Colorado, NC State, Florida State, and Cal, Oregon. Check the local listings for the games in your area. Wisconsin and Penn State at the top, but followed closely by a slew in the Big Ten. One game back in the lost column. That group will include this winner today. Wildcats have not moved it yet. Bazinet rolling and throwing into a crowd of white jerseys. Three defenders led by Pascal in front of the target, Mark Fillmore. Bazinet got, a one, got away with one right there. He had Fillmore coming from the backside. But he was his third option, and if you wait so long, you're going to have the pursuit of the coverage come from the backside and get in the throwing lane. That's a good job of Pascal taking a great angle and knocking the football down. But the angle was key. Didn't go through the man. He went around the man and got a hand on the football. Second-year starter from Largo, Florida. Second and ten. As it is two out of his first four for 17. Now a little something as Fillmore with a catch now in all 37 of his career games. Brett Bazinet, last week against Michigan, two touchdowns, but two out-of-character interceptions. As Michigan came in, and under the lights, here at Ryan Field, knocked off the Wildcats. Previous seven games, Brett had thrown only one. That's how out-of-character it was. Tyrell Sutton. Only able to carry it 10 times in that game for 56 yards. Well, I've got one reaction. What took them? Well, Sutton hit by Edmund Miles. Why did it take them this long and this many headaches to finally take that action? I think if you're Andy Reid, Dave, what you want to do is make sure you gather all the information and, and sit down and basically interrogate Terrell Owens and find out what he meant and what he said. He uh, received the answers, and to me, it's all, it's Terrell Owens. Everything is planned on what he's doing, and Andy Reid in quarter for him to have credibility amongst his team and his players, he had to set him down. On a third and two, Sutton breaking free. Tyrell Sutton, the top freshman running back in the country for 16 yards. He gets a great block here by Fields, his wide receiver. And here's guys staying on blocks. There you see block, block, block. When you get a hat on a hat and you get him in the open field, you got a chance of big play happening. But you have to finish blocks. And that's one thing Northwestern does very well is that they stay on their guy. They don't have to blow him off the ball. They just have to stay in their way. Came in today already over the 1,000-yard mark. 14 touchdowns. The Ohio Mr. Football Award winner last year. And at the 38, the grab by Fillmore, covered by Adam Shade at that time. I like what Mike Dunbar and Coach Randy Walker are doing. They're lining three receivers to one side. Trips formation, and they're isolating Mark Fillmore to the single receiver side, leaving Shada all alone on him one-on-one. -on -one. And that's a matchup that Northwestern would take all day. You'll see it. They have it again right here. There's Vance Fillmore. He's lined up one-on-one -on -one with Shada out there. That's a matchup that they love to have. Sutton. He'll make it third and short, tackled by Hodge. But Greenway just took a shot at Bazinet, too. End of the first quarter, all Iowa, but it ends on a hint of hope for Northwestern as they're finally moving it. Albert Young, two touchdowns, 14 0 Hawkeyes. Start of the second quarter and between periods, uh, Chris, Steve Newman, the referee, had some uh, pointed words with Chad Greenway. What was that all about? Well, Chad Greenway took a shot at Brett Bazinet. And uh, Mr. Newman is telling him, watch it now. Just be careful. On a third and one, Sutton 
Stop behind the yellow line. Ken Iwebama, the sophomore defensive end from Arlington, Texas. And the Wildcats down 14 nothing. will go for it on fourth and less than one. Great job by Iwebama getting his penetration on. It's going to come down and hits the inside gap. And Abdul Hodge coming over the top, too. That's pursuit to the football. That's four out of ten, five out of eleven, converting fourth downs. As they open up a nice slice of the defensive line for Sutton to squeeze through. The drive will continue with the 31. Yeah, watch Chad Greenway right here. Now keep your eye on him. As the play develops, clearly Bazinet does not have the football. Greenway takes a shot at Bazinet, and that's what Mr. Newman was informing Chad. He doesn't have the ball, and I guarantee you, Brett said, come on, bro, you were a quarterback at one time, man. Let up on me. That was a long time ago. He's got that linebacker mentality. He's all right. Bazinet's tough. He can take it. Our first penalty, if it is against Part Iowa. Of the snap. Well start. Number 56 offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. On Ryan Keenan, second penalty against Northwestern, and Ball Reese Davis has an update. Last time Rutgers made the postseason was the late unlimited Garden State Bowl in 1978. Bazinet chased by Edmund Miles. Junior linebacker from Tallahassee doesn't get many headlines playing alongside Hodge and Greenway are Napa game track. Albert Young already 76 yards in both touchdowns. His eighth and ninth of his career. Uh, as usual, Chris took the opening possession. And uh, the second possession, they had only 40 yards to travel after 19-yard punt. Great Lord, body strength. Shovel, Fillmore, and hit of the 33. Bezme's pass complete to Mark Fillmore. By Mike Follett. Yeah, this was put in by Utah by last year under Urban Meyer. It's a double option. You see Fillmore right here. He's going to come here. Sutton's there, and he's going to have his choice to pitch to which guy. Now, he chooses the wrong guy. There's Fillmore right there. If he pitches to Sutton, he's got a blocker out in front of him. That's a poor read by Brett Bezme. If he would have pitched to Sutton, he's off to the races. But that's a double option play that was made famous by Utah. Not many poor reads this year for Bazinet, but on third and long, he looks up, finds his man, touchdown, Northwestern, Sean Herbert. The leading receiver in the Big Ten, fifth in the country, has his fifth touchdown of the year, and the Wildcats are on the board. Well, here's where the maturation of Brett Bazinet comes into play. Patience. And we'll take a look at it after the extra point, but it was great patience on Brett's part. Joel Howells moves the extra point through, and it's 14-7. Watch Brett Bazinet's eyes. His eyes never go off the receivers downfield. He has room to work, but he just keeps up, keeps his eyes down the field. Got a double win route, strike. I got your poor read, Chris, right here in the end zone. Randy Walker with Brett Bazinet, who has recovered from a slow start to get Northwestern on the board with a 34-yard strike gathered in by Sean Herbert. Fourth down conversion key on that 12-play 80-yard scoring mark. 38 career touchdown passes, 15 this season for Bazinet, and now four behind Zach Kustak, his predecessor for number two all time, and just six off the career record. Albert Young with the Iowa touchdowns today returns the kick across the 30. The ESPN College Football Encyclopedia is the biggest reference guide ever published on the history of college football. You can read all about the profiles, the records, and the statistical leaders, and get the fight song lyrics of all 117 Division I programs, as well as box scores from every major bowl game ever played, Heisman vote breakdowns, and more. Available now wherever books are sold. 
and bring a shopping cart to crack that thing home too. Well worth the effort. Tate with the first appearance today for Clinton Solomon. Tate Solomon who missed practice Monday Clinton to attend Solomon. the funeral of his grandfather. Therefore held out as a starter but not for the entire game. Senior from Fort Worth. One of their many high school quarterbacks they've turned into talented contributors on both sides of the ball. Yeah, Clinton Solomon is the, the deep threat that Iowa has ever since the loss of 15-year veteran. It seems like it with Ed Hinkle, who will hopefully be back for the Iowa Hawkeyes at the end of the year. Maybe as soon as next week, Rick Ferentz says there's an outside chance Hinkle could return in. Solomon drags the pile all the way to midfield as we get an update from Reese Davis. Talking about programs that have overachieved this year, you can definitely include South Florida and Rutgers, but South Florida going off the, the night so far. Young has a crease. Hucks off seven more. Tackled by Herschel Henderson. Ed Hinkle, Chris, surprised us by showing up for pregame warm-ups in uh, full uniform. Well, I think that's Coach Ferentz wanting him to get out and get a little exercise, and it gives Ed the feeling to be a part of a team. Now, he went in and changed, but Ed Hinkle is a great receiver for this program. He's one of those program guys that you can win with. And here you'll see this is the play where he actually broke his right arm. It looks like a routine play, but he landed on it pretty hard. Young. First down to the 38. Ed Hinkle, their leading receiver last year with 63 catches. Missed not only in terms of his production, but in terms of his leadership. But as long as he's on the premises, he can still provide some of that. Well, one of the things is that coaches are getting caught up in calling plays in the game plan. And he's got a lot of young receivers playing for him. And he can go over there and help them, pat them on the back, and say, I recognize this coverage. Did you see what I see? And he's been around a long time. So he knows the system, and he knows how to attack the defensive system. Young nearing 100, 15 carries for 87 yards. Play fake, Tate goes wide open. Chandler, the tight end, up the sideline and down near the 10. Henderson saves the touchdown. Iowa's receiving leader. Yet another former high school quarterback, Scott Chandler, with his 30th catch of the year. Well, it doesn't change. The rules never change. This is set up by the run. Chandler has a delay block. Everybody's dropped back in zone coverage. You see a guy 6'7", that kind of size, could run. There's Ed. He said, I, I might have called that play. 28. Catch and run for Chandler. First and goal from the 10. And again, after the fake to Young, Tate rolling. Tate leaping. Touchdown. Well, Chandler repays his buddy. He repays his buddy, Drew Tate, for throwing him the ball play earlier by getting the key block. They come back with the same play. Chandler is on a delay, but see, he recognizes Drew is running the football, and he turns into a flying Lewinda brother and gets up and still lands on his feet. He's like a cat. The great job of Drew Tate recognizing and securing the football and getting it across the zone. First rushing touchdown of the season, just the third of the career of Drew Tate. You might put that right at the top of the Iowa highlight tape this year. Spectacular leap and landing to make it 21 to 7. Six plays. Well, all three Iowa touchdowns, touchdowns on the ground by that combination. Young for the first two, and Tate with his first rushing touchdown of the year. So the red zone ratio now is up to 28 for 29 this season. Best in the Big Ten, right at the top nationally. 21 to 7, Iowa, 9.56 to go, second quarter. Kyle Schlicker's kick. From the goal line, Brandon Roberson. The kick coverage by the Hawkeyes continues to be outstanding. Just the kind of day you think of for uh, afternoon Big Ten football. 
Cool overcast. He's starting to pick up. About 10,000 happy Hawkeye fans joined the 21 to 7 lead. Bazaday decides to keep. Had the option of pitching to Sutton that time. He web him and buries him after a short gain of two yards. And that's it. That's a positive play for the, the Wildcats with their offense. They do not want to get behind the sticks. And anytime they can put themselves with positive yards on first down with the throwing game, short and long, that Northwestern has, it's to their benefit. Randy Walker's problem against Michigan, the inability to get Tyrell Sutton really into the game because they had so many second and longs. He carried only 10 times for 56 yards. But contributing as a receiver. And dragged down by Miguel Merrick in SEC update, South Carolina, Arkansas, Reese Davis. Lead. Yeah, those are two teams that are pretty good. On third and five, Bazinet laid it out there a little too far in front of Ross Lane for him to both make the catch and find the first down mark. This is a little bit of a decision time for, for Randy Walker. I mean, it would be crazy to go for it, but they have that kind of confidence in their offense. And seeing the struggles that the defense has had, they don't want to go down three touches here now. Well, another three and out, which has been the case for the Wildcats, all but their one scoring drive. Marshide. Doing all the punting so far. He started with a 19 yarder and has been better since. That one out of bounds, unreturnable at the 27. 47 that time with the hop. Wildcats way back, middle of the second quarter. Millennium Park in Chicago, that is known as the Bean. We're just north of the Windy City in Evanston. On the shores of Lake Michigan. Wildcats on senior day, down 21 to 7, 8, 24 to go, second quarter. Sean Green checking into the Iowa backfield. As the Hawkeyes take over, first and 10 at their 27 yard line. Motion man is Herb Rigsby. And Green, a true freshman from Sickleville, New Jersey, brought down by Tim McGargill down to Rob Stone. Northwestern going without the services right now. Senior safety Frederick Tarver. He got poked in the eye. They're testing his eyesight. As soon as his vision clears, he can go. But Chris, I remember a couple years ago, you were telling me there's good hat, there's bad hat, and there's no hat. His hat not with him, sitting down here on the sideline. So that's not a good sign. Oh, that's bad hat. That's bad hat. And, and you only need one eye to go. You can see with one eye. Well, anything short of. Compound fractures. <laughs> they ought to be out there to you, right? <laughs> On second and four, Green, the Hawkeyes' second leading rusher behind Young. John and Green, it will the ball be carrier. Third and one. Tarver in the first quarter injured on a punt. Right, right there, he got poked in the eye. It's a case for visors, though. A lot of guys do see, you do see those protective visors on a lot of people. Fingers do get caught up in a face mask. Quite often, more often than you think. Both teams missing a starter in the secondary, Javon Johnson. Early on with a hamstring. Questionable to return today. So on third and one. Champ Davis checks in. They have Tate in the shotgun. And Iowa wants timeout. Timeout. Iowa. Iowa. The first of the first half. Of the half. So Kirk Ferentz with third and short. Time to discuss it. Back to Reese. Davis. No, it doesn't. Uh, and Reese, my question, I think the question in, in lots of minds dealing with this situation, why the Eagles let it get to this point? Well, I think it's important. It's the important part of their football team, and you'd hope that T.O. But nobody would, is that valuable. Well, exactly. Nobody. And you would hope that T.O., he was kind of quiet for a while, all right? They seem to put the summer problems behind, but something happens, and he says something maybe without thinking, although I do believe everything he says is already in his mind, and it's, it's uh, certainly made up that he's going to try to do something to maneuver himself out of Philadelphia. But what he's doing is only detrimental to the team, and I applaud Andy Reid for suspending him. Andy Reid had to suspend him, Dave, to have any credibility amongst his other players. Well, 
if what he wants is a ticket out of filling, what he gets is a ticket out of sight and out of mind indefinitely. Sean Green will come up shy of the first. Well, that's Tim McGargle that uh, we were talking about in the opening in a couple plays. This time he attacks the line of scrimmage as opposed to kind of sliding down at five yards deep. This time he goes attacks the line of scrimmage and he's able to make a great tackle to force Iowa to punt on a third and one. Needed six coming into the day for the career record here at Northwestern. 507 and counting now for Tim McGargle. Fenster maker. Hangs one way up. They're caught by Mark Fillmore at the 16 yard line. 48 yards. No return. Can't improve on that. 621 to go in the half. 21 7. Same story for a Northwestern offense that, with the exception of one scoring drive, has been stymied by this Iowa defense. They've not had much in the way of field position. They've not moved it much either. Only 120 total yards. As an A on the keeper, slides and picks up three. So far, Northwestern, the most prolific passing attack in the conference and among the best in the country, has had to kick it away already three times. The one time they got it uh, sustained, they took it 80 yards on 12 plays, and Sean Herbert took the touchdown pass from Brett Bazinet. It's not like Iowa comes out here and does anything really confusing. They're very basic and simple, but what they do, they do very well. That one almost intercepted. Antoine Allen had his hands on it. Let's go down to Rob. Now, oh, Bazinet, a great college quarterback in that spread offense, but NFL arm strength is a concern, according to draft expert Mel Kuyper, who believes Bazinet is going to kind of fall into that career backup type role in the NFL, kind of like the Detmer brothers. The individual workouts for him will be huge to show if he can make all those throws that the next level guys want. He's number seven or eight on the senior quarterback draft depth chart right now Kuiper says a day two late round selection guy well a lot of guys that start out in that slot end up starting with the rate of injuries in the NFL deep ball gathered in 36 yard line Mark Fillmore with the over the shoulder grab well there was a there was an answer to arm strength look Brett in my opinion I talked to we were talking to scouts down there before the game he does have a strong enough arm plus his smarts, plus his pocket presence. This is what I'm talking about, pocket presence. His feet are always moving, gets set, and is able to deliver the strike to Mark Fillmore. And for me, I'm looking at Iowa and saying, wait, it's third and long, and you're in zone coverage. One rule in zone, Dave, deep is the deepest. That's simple. And it's surprising to me that Fillmore was able to get behind that defensive backfield of Iowa. He went 44 yards, fake to Sutton, Bazinet. Flushed out, looks up, wide open, middle of the field. Ken Thompson to the 15. The march continues, and we go back after a flag here. We'll hear from Reese Davis, but a marker thrown at the 31 yard line, and Steve Newman says it's coming back. Yeah, an eligible man downfield. I don't know how that happens. An eligible downfield, number 62 on the offense. Five yards previous replay first down. Austin Matthews, who replaced Joel Belding in the starting lineup at center today. Belding called for holding three times. Right here, you see him right there. Now he's he's fine, 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 he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Eloquently put. Another marker down. Sutton tripped it to 32. Belding called for three holding penalties on four possessions in the third quarter against Michigan. So Matthews, who opened the season as the starter at center, back holding. to that spot. Number 56 on the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. On Ryan Keenan this time. Let's go to Reese Davis. Now, Texas at this point needing to win with some style points. But Jonathan Fields gathering in his first catch of the day because if Virginia Tech knocks off Miami, 
By the end of the season, if Virginia Tech remains undefeated, and I've seen the BCS experts saying if USC and Texas went out, they cannot be caught by Virginia Tech, but Texas does not have any remaining opponent anywhere near what Virginia Tech has on its schedule. Yeah, that's, you know, it's Texas' job. If you say style points, I say they need to run the score up and win big. On second and 24, Bazinet all day. And looks up. Find Sutton. Bazinet's pass complete to Tyrell Sutton. Sutton near the 40. Our All-State BCS Abdul standings Hodge. coming in. USC and after in on the play just one Iowa. week out of the top spot, back in front of Texas by an even smaller margin than uh, the Longhorns lead last week. Virginia Tech, Alabama, UCLA, all 8-0. and You've got to believe that the, the powers that be would love to have just two undefeated teams in that scenario, wouldn't you? Well, that takes some heat off. Third and 15. As a day. Deep middle, Fillmore, and incomplete inside the five. Antoine Allen had him man for man. It's a great throw by Brett Bazinet. He throws it only where Fillmore can go get it, and let's see if, see, Fillmore's got to bring that ball in. That hit his hands. You get two hands on the football, you're a Big Ten receiver as good as Fillmore. He can make that catch. Arm strength, not a question. The two penalties really cost Northwestern. One of them was was ticky tack. Should not have been called. It hurts Northwestern's chances to close this gap. So on fourth and 15, Larshide with his fourth pick of the day. For a spiral. And out of bounds at the 10. So pretty good the position punting that time, 31. And his usual no return. See Webma coming in there with his arm up. Referees down there watching the game. Brett Bazin to say, hey, that's a that's a blow to the head. Uh, again, I think. College football primetime presented by Polaroid ESPN tonight, 745 Eastern. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Unusual for the Hawkeyes to start with four field position. Albert Young returns after Sean Green gave him a series off, and he goes for eight. Brought down by Nick Roach. Um, it's a great job of moving and winning the pad level battle for the offensive line of Iowa. How I can tell that is Albert Young is not getting hit until he hits the second wave of defenders, which equals linebackers and safeties. That means defensive linemen have to get off blocks and split double teams. That's something they're not doing up front. Young now at 95 yards and 16 carries. And that should get him right at his fifth consecutive 100-yard performance. Deontay Battle, again, the secondary called on to bring down Albert Young. You mentioned it earlier, Dave, I thought it was a great point about Albert Young and his ability. But you're seeing a lot of Big Ten backs to go out and catch the ball out of the backfield or line up at wide receiver. Brian Calhoun's one guy, Sutton's another guy. Uh, even Lawrence Maroney has been able to catch the football out of the backfield this year. And a lot of that is, is that Young actually played wide receiver as a freshman, true freshman before he got hurt. Missed uh, most of that freshman season with the knee. Albert Young, the ball carrier. And let's get an update in the studio from Reese Davis. All right, Dave, coming up on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, Lou and Mark are alongside. We'll have the latest on T.O. Texas looking good. We'll also discuss Joe Paterno's comments this week. Forget about the Texas running game. How about Vince Young in the passing game? Wait till halftime. And how about Iowa? Year after year, they start slow, but at the end of the year, they're one of the better teams at conference. Mark of a well-coached team, always improving throughout the way. Kirk Ferentz's team rolling again, guys. We'll see you at halftime. All right, we'll look forward to it. 90 seconds away, second down and eight. Motion from Andy Brodell. Rutate on a roll. And fires a dart right for the first down and three extra. Grigsby just inside the 40 gathers it in. This is where Iowa now has to kick in there. A little bit of a no-huddle offense as the clock's ticking. Being very blasé about their approach. But Drew Tate's been in a situation before and he knows exactly how much time is on the clock and how quick he needs to get the play in motion. Three wides. Hung out on a pattern. And hit at the 45-yard line. Brodell is double the season complete. total of catches today. Marquise Cole quickly wraps him up. 
Timeout call with a minute six remaining in the half. Well, they're going to have the short three-step drop there all day. Look, Northwestern, talking to Greg Colby yesterday, rarely, rarely plays man coverage. So anytime they want the three-step or the quick roll-off, it's going to be there for the taking, and Northwestern's philosophy is just rally to the football and eliminate the yak yards. Drew Tate, reigning first-team All-Big Ten quarterback. And today, his favorite target has been Andy Brodell with some Grigsby mixed in and even doing it a little bit with his legs with a spectacular leap and landing. He's sticking it for his first rushing touchdown of the year. Triple Salkow, 11 to 13 through the air for 141 yards. That's a, you've done figure skating in your day, Dave? Never. Okay. I think that's a thing, though, Salkow. Uh, it is? Salkow. It is. You nail that. Not so. nearly compared to the triple axle, of course, much more difficult. I know what Dick Button's talking about. <laughs> Kirk Ferentz would absolutely <laughs> like to have a 28-7 halftime lead. Northwestern, not an offense you can trust to stay down for very long. Although they've been held to 177 yards. And only 45 on the ground so far today. On second and three, Matt Malloy. Six catches for the academic all Big Ten selection in finance. Battle there to hit him at a minute one and a half. Recognition by Drew Tate because his own blitz was coming. And he knew that he had a defensive area in the th uh, throwing lane of Malloy. Defensive end is not going to get out of there in time. So Drew Tate sees the defensive end drop and bam, throws it. Guaranteed completion. Just a little pitch and catch because the defensive end doesn't have the speed to get out and take away the outcut. First down, 41 yard line. Tate, another short drop, and Roach has him and drives him back beyond midfield. Well, Tim McGargle, rightfully so, gets a lot of the headlines. But at practice on Thursday, I asked Coach, who's number 38? It's Nick Roach, Chris. He's probably our best athlete, and you're going to see him come right here. He's going to jump awesome over. Look at that nice move. Away. Good feet. Tried to cut him. He hit him with a swim and shuffle inside, and he keeps his feet coming. He's down in his three-point stance. Watch that little blip. That's very good footwork. Running back speed, running back move, turns his shoulders, clears his feet, and is able to finish Drew Tate off. Very good athlete, Nick Roach. Big promises in the future for that young man here at Northwestern at linebacker. He was a high school running back in Milwaukee. That is sack number eight for the season for Northwestern. They don't have many, but they don't give up many. They've allowed only six. You're starting to see that, too. A lot of teams want speed on the ends on defense, so what are they doing? They're putting their linebackers down. Chad Greenway will go down and be a pass rusher. Uh, Bobby Carpenter, who's not played down much, went down to a defensive end in passing situations for Ohio State and has a number of sacks. So, you're, you know, everything coaches imitate and copy each other all the time. It's not, uh, it's not plagiarism. It's taking a good idea and put it to your, put it your, put it to your own use. Just trying to keep your job That's is what right. it is. Yeah. Nick Roach is a, is a good athlete and a good move by Greg Colby of putting him down at defensive end to get speed off the corner. Well, the final Hawkeye timeout with 52 seconds. Tate's progress was marked at the Wildcat 46, so second down and 15. There he is again. Let's see what he does this time. There he is. He'd be coming off the speed. Four receiver look. Tate had a streak of seven straight completions. That one broken up. McGargle dropping back. Intended for the tight end Chandler. Yeah, battle was also back there. So. It's a good job of McGargle running with Chandler down to see him in too deep. And look at battle from his corner spot breaking in, and Tim McGargle gets in the throwing lane. Now Drew Tate has to realize, hey, I got 6-7 run down there against 6-1. Let me put a little more air to that ball. He was open. He might come back to it again. Third and 50, 46 seconds. Four-man rush, good protection, a strike, and a first down. Matt Malloy. And that is how you end up on the bottom of the country's defensive stats as Northwestern finds itself. Matt Third and long, they get 16, needing 50. He's a well-coached receiver. He's going to push his route past the sticks, so he does have room to come back for the football and the recognition of getting out of bounds. 
to stop the clock. Yeah, they're going to be able to challenge him a little bit now. Third and 15, if he's pushing and he, his shoulders and arms start moving faster, he's going to break down out of his route. You've got to be able to break on that. Any time, 40 seconds. Chandler. Given out of bounds by Battle. And the clock continues to run. Did not get out before. I don't know why it's not ruled down. Evidently. Wow. Although Ference is uh, beside himself. He should be. So Tate has to spike it at 17 seconds. And there are about 10,000 Hawkeye fans here on the road, but it sounds like Kinnick Stadium right now. I understand, too, now that the clock is kept by the officials. There's Chandler with a good catch. He's still running, still running. He's out of bounds. The clock has to stop. He ruled his progress had been stopped before wow. he got out. Wow. No timeouts. And more Hawkeye fan boos. As with 16 seconds remaining, now Ference and the coaches have got to move on. Although he's still upset and try and figure out how to get it 23 yards. With uh, maybe three more snaps left in the half. Well, he has a right to be upset. I mean, Nate Ch or, uh, Chandler was working himself out of bounds. He understands. Solomon checks in on a third and four. Three wide right. That's where Tate looks. And lost for Grigsby. Caught out of bounds. Stops the clock at 10 seconds on the two yard line. Kirk Grigsby, sophomore from Mayflower, Arkansas, who had the second and third touchdown catches of his career in the first half against Michigan last game. 20 yards here to set up first and goal at the two. All right, you have 10 seconds left. If you throw it, you got time for two plays. You run it, you got time for one. And obviously, you're going to throw the football. Look for, look for the big guy down here. Right here's Chandler. Big target at 6 7. Also, Clinton Solomon on the fade. Solomon is the target, and it is broken up by Battle with six seconds. Now they, what they tried to do was run the fade stop, and, and Clinton Battle, or uh, Battle does a good job, but Solomon doesn't come back to the football, and the other thing is the ball's too low. Battle does a nice job of breaking in front of the receiver, but if you're going to run that little fade stop, you got to put the ball where Solomon can only get it, and he can use his body to box out Battle. Poorly thrown ball didn't give Clinton Solomon a chance to go up and get it. That one had a chance to come back 100 yards for Battle. Yeah. Schlicker on to try and make it 24-7. It was nearly 21-14 as the 19-yarder is good with two seconds to go in the half. And you could kind of read the face of Battle, who was relieved that he didn't give up the touchdown, obviously, but also at the same time upset with himself that he didn't grab it. Well, he had a chance to make a, a Pontiac game-changing nominee play. Didn't happen, though. He won't be on there this week, at least not for that play. Northwestern down 17. Kirk Ferentz's defense has turned him into a one-dimensional offense. They've basically been able to take Tyrell Sutton out of the game. He's got just 33 yards on nine carries. Nation's leading freshman rusher. One thing Iowa has to do now, they're going to go into the locker room, and, and I'm telling you that Mike Dunbar and Randy Walker are pretty good at making adjustments to what Iowa's doing defensively. Northwestern will have the ball to start the second half. This is what set it up. Well, it sets it up because Chandler's also running down the middle of the field, which held the corner inside. Grigsby was able to break to the outside, and he's wide open because there was pressure put on the deep coverage by the tight end running down the middle of the field. Boy, also, Key, don't forget the third and 15, 16-yard Tate to Malloy hookup. That's a lot of third downs, Dave, that I, I was able to convert when they're way right past the chains. Schlicker not wanting to return. And bringing it back as the first half clock expires is Frank Abernathy. 
The Hawkeyes, the last four seasons, almost impossible to catch from behind in the second half. They're 32 and 2 with a halftime lead. Let's go down to Rob Stone. Well, Coach, what have you guys done to limit this prolific Northwest offense? Well, you know, our guys are playing very hard right now. This, this is a dangerous team. You know, Bazinet is one heck of a player. Uh, their whole team is very explosive. This game's hardly over. we got uh, 30 minutes to go still. What were your thoughts as you saw Drew Tate uh, do his flying Walinda impersonation on that touchdown run? Well, yeah, I'd rather see him hit the ground. But, uh, you know, he's a motiva motivated guy, a real competitive guy. Uh, and, he, you know, our whole team gets inspired by his action. So he's a little sorry now, but he'll be fine. Hey, Coach, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Tate also 15 of 19 through the air, 197 yards. It's 24-7 Iowa over Northwestern at the half. Now Reese Davis, Mark May, Lou Holtz, and the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Guys. All right, Dave, I know that the moment everyone's going to remember from the first half is Drew Tate going all carry Strug on that touchdown, but he did an excellent job. Something we see teams mess up just about every week, it seems, made in handling the two-minute offense and getting the field goal drive late. And I think it all goes down to coaching and preparation during the week. When your coaches prepare you for that situation and you go out and execute it as Drew Tate did. I think it all relates back to head coach Kirk Ferentz preparing his team in that situation. We see so many times where coaches do not execute two minutes properly and they don't put points on the board when they should in the last few minutes of the half. Well, it's not that the other teams do not prepare for it. Sometimes your team doesn't execute as well. I don't know if any football team doesn't work on the two-minute drill, but I will agree with you. Iowa was very impressive in that drill. You know, it reminds me of something one time I said to a coach, why in the world would you kick it to this dangerous punt returner? And he said, Reese, sometimes the punter makes mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Back in Evanston, Illinois for the second half. Dave Barnett, Chris Spielman, Rob Stone. All Iowa first half, 24-7. They will kick off to the Wildcats to begin the third quarter. Kyle Schlicker has it teed up. Hawkeyes have outgained the Wildcats 316 total yards to 177. And this will be returned. No, it'll be down. Four yards deep, Brandon Roberson. As we look Brandon at our Robertson Napa game track. In the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20. Where it'll be first and, 10 and in the first half, as an accurate, 11 to 15. And connected with Sean Herbert for the touchdown. Young already over 100 for the fifth straight game. And the first two Iowa scores. Tate added his first and only but memorable rushing touchdown of the season. As Abdul Hodge, Chad Greenway, and the Iowa defense come out and look at a first down pass complete to Jonathan Fields for about six yards. They have combined to hold the nation's leading freshman rusher Tyrell Sutton, the only 33 yards on nine carries as we look at our Ruby Tuesday first half stats. The one that sticks out there, and you talk about holding Northwestern's prolific offense down right there. We have 17 first downs. You're going to control the football and something Iowa did throughout the first half. Sustained drives. Andy Walker's spread offense you think of as a passing dominant attack, but balance is important. And he says he went to this attack. Sutton is hit by Hodge when he was convinced that you could run the ball consistently out of it, but they've not been able to. Today. Well, part of that is that they've been down. And they've not been in a lot of third and one situations like this. They've been down and they had to throw the football. But in order for the spread offense to be its most effective, like Randy Walker says, you've got to be able to run the football and pound it in there when you need to pound it in there, like this play right here. Yep, here's a must. Third and inches. And Bazinet will sneak it. One play after Abdul Hodge collected his 400th career tackle. Back to the studio and Reese Davis. All right, Dave, every week, singular honors, a singular All-America Player of the Week, and you can get involved in that action as well. All you have to do is text the word VOTE to 87654 on your singular wireless phone. You access the nominees, and you might win yourself a trip to the national championship game. Singular All-America Player of the Week up for grabs, guys. All right, Reese in the first and ten. And a catch by Fillmore for about five. The senior from Reynoldsburg, Ohio. He's got a pass in all 37 games of his career. Hooking up with Bazinet as a pass-catch combo for the fifth year. Well, Rob Stone had a great point talking with Coach Ferentz. As Coach Ferentz was leaving the field, he said, make no mistake about it, we're not going to go to sleep on this team. You can't. Northwestern can score too many points, and they can score in a hurry if they need to. 
Five catches, 69 yards. Phil Moore, high snap as it has to keep. Belted quickly by Greenway. Let's go to Rob Stone. And Dave caught up with Northwestern head coach Randy Walker just before kickoff in this game. He admitted, hey, you know, we're still in it. There's a lot of football left to play, but we got to pass it a little bit more to start cutting into this deficit right now. Defensively, he said, we need more movement from our defensive front. One interesting note, I overheard quarterback Brett Basney having a, a brief, not a heated, a, a calm conversation with the referee, asking him to keep an eye on hits to the helmet, something that you guys had noticed in the first half. And we'll show you what he was referring to in a moment. Third and five here. Bazinang. Boy, a dangerous move that time by Fillmore, who was right about at the first down when he made the catch, then retreated, and then went forward, and he will move the chains. This is in the first half. And the issue Bazinang is uh, concerned about. Well, it was just a little shot to the head. And I'll tell you, if that was on Sunday afternoon and they had NFL on their shirts, that's an automatic flag right there in college football they're a little bit more liberal on the hits to the quarterback and a web another defensive end play fake and over the middle it's Fillmore into Iowa territory and another first down one of the reasons Fillmore. why this spread can go and why it does go is when they start to get in the rhythm Dave right now you're starting I'm starting to at least sense through this glass up here that there's a rhythm developing and they're getting rid of the football and on time you see right here Fillmore you got one low and one high and there's Fillmore coming in low. They high low him. And Bazinet's just waiting for him to clear. And the protection by the Northwestern offensive line has been outstanding the whole game. 12 yards to the 47. Another first. And Bazinet will keep after faking the shovel pass right, and come Bazinet up just shy of the first down. Adam That's what we talked about. That was that double option play that Brett Bazinet has the option to pitch to the low guy, Fillmore, coming underneath. Or the high guy. There's the Sutton's play. the high guy. Here comes the underneath guy the low guy. But Brett Bazinet decides to keep the football and get positive yards. That's one where he made the bad decision in the first half. He comes yeah, back to it, makes the right decision, and gets nine yards on the carry. And the right decision to slide, too. This time with a dislocated throwing shoulder. And a broken leg in his career. Good key to his improvement this year, just the simple fact that he has been healthy. Sutton limited to 41 yards on 11 carries, who averages 127 and a half yards per game as the nation's leading freshman running back. I'll tell you, Pascal did a good job in open field tackle on Sutton. He's quicker to hit cup out there in, in space, and he, he kept his feet and kept his eyes on him and wrapped him up because he hit him with a spin move, but he held on. Tenth play of this drive. First down to the 33. And again, Bazinet rolls and throws complete. Herbert at the 24. And Quan Allen quickly with the hit. And this is when I, this is my, where they might get a Webema right here. And this is where Brett Bazinet's lobbying with the officials might come to help. This is the first time Brett has looked down his receiver and there's Webema coming and keep hustling, keep hustling. And again, you know, he's got to realize the ball's thrown and just keep your hands off of him. Even though it's, he, you know, he couldn't hurt a mosquito with that little push. Brett will sell it. He's been around a while. He's a veteran. He knows how to act. That's what the coach is saying. Hey, just lay off him. You can't get mad at your kid for that. But know how the officials call him. That's where working the official worked in Bazinet's favor. First Iowa penalty today. They are the least penalized team in the country. Less than four per game. Kirk Ferentz said, I can't really explain that because we don't necessarily emphasize it. We fear that if we do, it would make us less aggressive. Well, too much aggression here and a first and 10 from the 12 when we come back to Ryan Field. All of a sudden, it just pop comes to me. I have my cell phone and I put on the recorder and I can record my little melody. Okay. And without the phone, the melody would be lost. Lost in the sea of no more forever. Right? It's done wonders for my music. In all the world, there are a select few who at their very core are capable of incredible transformation. Under the most grueling conditions, they are shaped, hardened, sharpened, 
ready to stand among the most elite of all warriors. The few, the proud, the Marines. Introducing Taco Bell's new steak or chicken nachos Bel Grande. Grilled authentic carne asada steak or marinated all white meat chicken give nachos Bel Grande that great flavor of the grill. For great grilled taste, think outside the bun. In sports, you always got to bring out your A game, especially when you play scene in sports, powered by ESPN. Oh, yeah, it's mine. It's mine. It's a new DVD board game hosted by Dan Patrick. It has tons of trivia questions. Red Hill. The X Games. Ooh, nine. No! And clips from every major sport. I know this. Uh, immaculate reception. But with us, you just don't want to come in last. Introducing Scenic Sports, powered by ESPN. The ultimate DVD game for the ultimate sports fan. Have you seen it? It's not okay. Just the two of us. Love your drugstore purchases with Love the Double from Chase. Love them. Because now they give you double rewards. Love the double from Chase. Back at Evanston, in the first half, five possessions all Northwestern had. They had to punt four times. What have they changed in their halftime adjustments? Well, I, I think Randy Walker and Mike Dunbar have done a good job, and they're establishing a the rhythm. Their tempo has been pushed up a little bit, and they're getting Mark Fillmore involved in the game. And when you have a quarterback like Brett Fasnay, who's had the success that he's had, like Randy Walker said, you're never out of it, but you can't blow too many opportunities, especially when you're down here in the red zone. First down, Iowa's 12-yard line. Sutton looks to turn the corner and turn it up, and has it all the way in. Touchdown, Northwestern. Following a Jonathan Fields block for his 15th touchdown of the year. That's what I'm talking about, Dave, about the power of the young freshman from Akron Hoban High School. He keeps his feet constantly moving, and we were down there looking at him before the game, and he's built powerfully down low. Big hips, big rear end, an excellent nose for the end zone. Just kept his feet driving, carried McGill into the end zone with him. Pretty much a must that the Cats get points to start the third quarter. Sutton makes sure it happens. And Joel Howells makes it a 10-point game with 10-19 to go in the third. Well, anytime you're going to have big runs down the field, you get good receiver blocking. Then he says, have on, free of run. Randy Walker's Wildcats back in this one. Sunday at 11. Preview games from around the league on Sunday NFL Countdown. Ruby Tuesday's famous Ultimate Colossal Burger. It's the only burger around that comes with a pound of beef, two kinds of cheeses, and a support beam. One of 36 famous burgers, only at Ruby Tuesday. So good. I don't know. Yeah. To me, a dog's a dog. You got this one stock, you stare at it every month thinking it's going to come back, but it just sits there. It'd be nice if your quarterly report had some kind of analysis or, or something to help you decide when to move on or not. Like a dog meter, you know? Flavor, Dr. Pepper. One taste, and you get it. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Charles Schwab. Get premium service without the premium price. Talk to Chuck, Charles Schwab, and Dr. Pepper, and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste, and you get it. 
Northwestern takes the second half kickoff and drives 80 yards in 11 plays in 4 minutes and 41 seconds. Back in this thing as their third quarter dominance improves to 69-48 for the season. That's a good sign of coaching making adjustments at halftime. Owls trying to avoid a big return. Grigsby comes up. And Iowa, again, is going to have great field position across the 40 to Reese Davis in the studio. Then there are some years when things just don't go your way. In a related story, here's Purdue. Against Michigan State, driving late in the first half, Hayter gets hit, fumbles the ball. David Heron picks it up. He fumbled it, so Purdue's going to get out of it. No, they're not. Eric Smith picks up the second fumble and takes it all the way back just before the half and the Spartans have a seven point lead at the break. One of those years for Joe Tiller. Who would have thought in November they'd still be looking for their first Big Ten victory. New quarterback Jason Manson hands off to Albert Young who scampers across midfield for a first down. Young who had 100 yards plenty of time left in the first half his fifth straight. Jason Manson from Bloomfield, Connecticut, junior who uh, lost only two games in his entire high school career, won three state championships. They are working on Drew Tate on the Iowa sideline. That, 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 that's interesting. I, mean, I know Rob Stone will be on top of it, but you think they'd work on him at halftime, okay. that's a problem. You really would. Young, to the 46. Makes you wonder if something happened to him when he came out and, and warmed up a little bit. Getting ready for the second half. That's that's the only thing I can think of, Dave, because obviously you're not going to have this posse of people here in and, and, and a secure car, a secure security guard down there. Rob's down there, too. Yeah, I'm right behind Tate right now, and what they've done is they had kind of taken off the belt of his pants and lowered them a little bit, and they're fidgeting on the left part of his leg, either it's his hip or his knee. Looks like they... I don't think he took a shot, obviously, but there's some kind of adjustment on the left side that they're working on. I'll try to get some more info in a second for you guys. All right. In the meantime, Manson with a second down at seven at his first pass. Grigsby unable to make a move on Marquise Cole. Yeah, that's a quick whistle right there. Marquise Cole's having a heck of a ball game. He defeats the blocker and has the awareness of ripping the ball out, something Northwestern has done well this year. Watch Marquise Cole. Now watch him go and work this football. He secures the tackle and look the ball ripped out right there. That's a fumble. That is a fumbled football. Now that looked to me like he was already down. Well, let's do, well, that's an offensive guy and I'm a defensive guy. As you can clearly see off that replay, that yeah. was a fumble. <laughs> On second viewing, that's a break. That's a big break for Team Marty up 10. Champ Davis into the backfield. Grigsby motion, third and six. Manson, Grigsby gathers it in, but staggers out of bounds at the 43 hit by Cole. Last play, let's listen for the whistle and see where the ball is. The whistle way after the ball had been ripped free. Yeah, that, and he's, just, he's watching the game. He's got to watch with that ball. That ball's out. That ball should have been spotted back. Now, fortunately for Northwestern, since they made the play, it didn't hurt them, forcing Iowa to punt. But again, you got to watch the football. Only the third punt of the day for Andy Fenstermaker. Fillmore fair catches at the 12, 8.26 to go in the third. Bazinet, the Wildcat offense, back and down by 10. It seems like everyone's rushing to get things done faster. But sometimes the best solution is to slow things down. Budweiser Select starts with the finest American and Bavarian hops. Then we brew it longer, giving the beer a full flavor that's easy to drink. Why do we slow things down to make Budweiser Select? It's worth it. Budweiser Select. Expect everything. Singular customers, text city to 243 to download the coming to your city ringtone. If you've had an adjustable rate mortgage for the last few years, you've enjoyed some of the lowest mortgage payments in history. But all that is about to change. The Federal Reserve continues to raise short-term interest rates, so your payment will be going up soon. As much as $100, $200, even $300 a month. 
The solution? Call the number below and ask Quicken Loans how you can convert your adjustable rate mortgage or home equity loan into a secure, low interest fixed rate mortgage. The good news is that right now, rates for fixed rate mortgages are lower than those for mortgages that are adjusting. A rare situation you need to take advantage of quickly. It's easy. Lock in a low interest rate and keep your payments low all over the phone. If you have an adjustable rate mortgage, higher payments are staring you in the face. You need to call Quicken Loans right away. Interest rates are climbing, and so are the payments on your adjustable rate mortgage or equity loan. Don't wait. Pick up the phone and call Quicken Loans, America's home loan experts. ESPN College Football presented by Nokia. Drew Tate apparently suffering a thigh bruise on that touchdown leap in the first half. Stone reports getting an extra pad added. Meanwhile, Brett Bazinet back. First and 10 from his 12. After the fake to Sutton. One of his two inaccurate pass passes intended, intended for fields. fields. Rob, what else have you found out? Well, he's listed as questionable for his return. You see him working on the bike right now, and you're dead on, Dave. A much thicker, larger pad added to that upper left thigh as he's trying to work out the kinks during that last time out. He was taking some snaps, making some sharp cuts, running forward and backwards as you take a look at that hit, which they are telling us right now is what led to that upper left thigh bruise on Drew Tate. Boy, not surprisingly, with another viewing, because he definitely got a shot right on it. Going deep and just overthrown for Herbert. Today's pass is incomplete. Intended well, that's for a nice Sean play Herbert. call right there. They set up the quick little screen Adam on the with no intention of throwing a quick little screen. Like they, they ran a quick little screen on first down. It didn't go. They tried to show the same play with a repeat Third look of it, but they send the guy 12. deep. And it almost worked. It, uh, good throw by Bazinet just over the outreached hands of Herbert. Big Ten receiving leader, nearly eight catches per game, fifth in the country, but it's third and ten now. Northwestern has hit on five of their ten third down conversions. Well, Fillmore right here, that's been his guy so far today. Good protection, deep again for Thompson at midfield, knocked away. Marcus Pascal, the free safety. Uh, Greenway was in Bazinet's uh, grill again. There's the ball. Uh, that that you know that's World Cup material right there. He'd be a prime candidate for playing in the World Cup with that flop. Three and out. They don't move it from the 12. Greenway pulled up that time. And Chris, I gotta think if he doesn't get that discussion with the referee in the first half, he probably doesn't. So the warning worked in this case. Rigsby. Just shy of midfield. 43-yard boot. And let's check in with another update, Reese Davis. All right, Dave, number two, Texas Promise. We wouldn't see the same Longhorn team that slot through the first half against Oklahoma State last week. And boy, we're not. The freshman, Jamal Charles, going in against a tough Baylor defense for a touchdown. Longhorns just added another score from Ramon Taylor. 27-0 late in the first half. Kansas hadn't beaten Nebraska since 1968, but they're up by 12 in the second quarter. Drew Tate has returned and rolls on first and 10 from his 49. Intended for Matt Malloy, Marquise Cole. With a hand on that one. Our Nokia moment in time today is the play on which Tate suffered that thigh bruise. As Deontay battled into him, upended him. Tate still made the spectacular landing, got his first rushing touchdown of the year, but in the process, cost himself the first series of the second half before he could get extra padding on that thigh. Now second to ten. That last play, he did not look like he was limping or limited by the thigh. Albert Young limited as Battle comes up to close off the corner. Nice job of Battle coming up, taking on the big fella at tight end, defeating him and forcing Young out of bounds. But that's if you want your corners to play, you got to play like that. Chris, if you're a defense like Northwestern, you look at the paper and you see that you are at the bottom statistically in the entire country. Right. What, what effect does that have on you mentally? Is that 
so debilitating that it's hard to break out of the malaise or well, I, I mean, think you hope it fires you up and you play your absolute best when you see that right? yeah, you think so but they do have tremendous confidence in their offense and they hope that they play one series at a time and you don't get caught up in the statistics and I know some teams do some teams don't but like you said if you're dead last believe me coach Colby's going in and say hey, don't worry about the statistics let's just win our individual battles some raindrops start to fall here at Evanston another three and out and the Wildcat defense comes up with two stops to begin the third quarter. It's exactly what they needed to get back in this football game. We talked about they would need four to five stops to have a chance to win this. That's two in a row. Dexter Makers had himself a good day. Fillmore unable to return it. 35-yard kick. The last time they started on their 12 and couldn't move, and this time they'll start on their 15. As we take a look at the KFC storyline. Tate through the air, 15 of 20 for right at 200, 197. And the score on the ground, and Young now at 122, and the first two touchdowns of the day. Setting the tone by getting Iowa established early on on the ground. Sutton's not really been able to do that from Northwestern. Nation's sixth leading rusher. Fifth leading scorer brought down by Mitch King. Well, Mitch King did a great job of spinning Mitch back King after playing off his one. block and getting Tyrell Sutton down. But Mitch King just realized, wait a second, this little guy isn't supposed to run that hard because Mitch King was shocked when he would hit Tyrell because Tyrell was able to get four yards after getting hit at the line of scrimmage. Sutton limited to 56 against Michigan, 56 yards here. There's a strike over the middle. Herbert. At the 35-yard line, the Hawkeyes saying he bobbled it and dropped it, but the officials disagreeing for the moment. That's a gut call, and you're seeing what Northwestern's doing right now. They're going to their hurry-up offense. Just take a look at the replay. Boom. They're going to bring it back. Iowa gets its wish. It is ruled incomplete. Now, Pascal on a hit. I tell you, Herbert knew he's going to take the shot. Very difficult catch over the middle. See it on the replay right here. There's the catch. Ball's coming out. And well, you know what? I think he's got it. I he think definitely it. has that. You know what, and, and David? We've done two games in a row where the replay officials have kind of disagreed with the angles and the, uh, the replays that we have seen. And now they're taking a look at it here. And this is a chance to get it right. To me, from that angle, it looks like a catch. His arm was underneath the ball. There's the catch. There's the hit by Pascal. And there. Oh my God. He's got both arms under it. It looks to me from that, and we'll take a look at it from this angle. That arm to me is between his chest and the ground. And that's a good catch. Now it has to be irrefutable. I've been practicing that word all week. You nailed it. Irrefutable evidence that he caught the ball. Now to me, that's irrefutable. But I've been 0 for 2 in my irrefutability <laughs> the past two weeks. <laughs> your, is that your, a word there, Dave? Your irrefutability <laughs> is very refutable. <laughs> so Steve Newman, the referee, waiting for uh, the word from the replay official up here in the press box. You notice though, what Northwestern did, they went to their hurry up mode to try to get the ball snapped before the officials can get going. The umpire stepped over the ball to slow the game down. Let's look at it one more time. This clearly our best angle. Okay, there's the ball out. Now watch his right arm is between the ball and his body in the ground. And there's no bob, there's no, there's no resetting it. Video evidence that the pass was caught. Yeah, Ball Good replaced call. on the 34 and a half yard line. First down. Now, once he reset it, you didn't see him trying to bobble it a little bit on the ground to make sure he had it. He didn't need to. He definitely had it, and they got this one right. Well, it's indisputable, not irrefutable. Same I knew, thing. I knew it had a, a bowl on it. Same difference. So first down, Herbert, the nation's fifth leading receiver. Wildcats' first touchdown today. And they move 
from the 35. Bazinet faking the option. Iowa had everything stepped out here. And you just start holding your breath if you're a Northwestern fan or Randy Walker and Mike Dunbar because uh, Brett Bazinet put lowered his shoulder and had shoulder problems tried to run over the, the fine middle linebacker Abdul Hodge from Iowa. Bazinet who's missed Large uh, parts of the 2002 season with a broken Great leg. On the play, and Played despite the a dislocated uh, throwing shoulder. I have never heard of that for a quarterback, but he did it last year. Has not missed a single rep this season. Ross Lane is across midfield with a first down, and we go to Reese Davis. Dave will check in again on Minnesota and Indiana and Lawrence Maroney in a 14-7 game in the third. Going through the Hoosier defense, Gophers missed the extra point but then picked off Blake Powers right afterwards. So Minnesota, Indiana, 14-13 in the third quarter. All right, so that one's close. This one getting closer. It was 24-7 Hawkeyes at the half. A Big Ten elimination games in terms of contention for the championship. Jonathan Fields to just Jonathan for one Fields. yard. The Big Ten begins today. Just absolutely as wide open as it could possibly be. Penn State, Wisconsin at 5-1, and one, a half game ahead of Ohio State. And then you have Michigan, Northwestern, and Iowa all just one back in the loss column. Interesting to point out at the beginning of the year, I thought there were eight teams that could legitimately compete for the Big Ten championship. And uh, I had Purdue and Penn State switched. And so Coach Paterno and Michael Robinson have done a great job. Quarterback draw, Bazine. Tripped up. A yard and a half shy of the first at the 40. And this is why I think he could be an NFL quarterback. He has enough mobility and, and a good enough arm to help somebody. I think he has a chance, plus he's smart and a hard worker. But right here, watch his little burst. He sells the, sells the pass and look at the burst and understanding and protecting the football, something that Northwestern puts a huge emphasis on as far as protecting the ball and ball security. Third, a little less than two, and they bury Tyrell Sutton for a Tyrell loss Sutton of two. Matt Kroll with the first burst up from defensive tackle. Matt Kroll on the tackle for Iowa. And if I'm Northwestern, I'm going for it here. Well, Matt Kroll's right here, and you're going to see this guard pull, so Matt Kroll's going to get on his hip. Three. Watch it. Look at him. See, he's going to get right on the hip. Get on the hip and follow him. Follow the pulling guard. It'll take you to the promised land. He followed the pulling guard. And front formation Fans apparently agreeing. Not happy to see the Deep punting unit the out. Rather than a try on a fourth and three. Well, he's not, he's not uh, above going for trickeration, Reese. Be the perfect spot for that. And they get a marker. Right. 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 The lay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It gives you more room to work. Part of the say, football. That, that's got to be on purpose to back up and have a little more room to work to with. This would be Larshad's sixth kick of the afternoon. He's handled every punt instead of uh, the guy who had handled all but one punt all season, Ryan Peterson. For no return, he has been successful there, and this one will be marked out of bounds at the nine yard line. Well, right at the 10. Tonight, ESPN has the showdown of the top two defenses in the country. Number five, Miami, at number three, Virginia Tech. And Blacksburg will be up for grabs at 7.45 Eastern tonight. College football primetime presented by Polaroid on ESPN and in high definition on ESPN HD. Marcus Vick is not a better player than Michael Vick, but it's my opinion that he's a better thrower than Michael Vick. And I don't think I'm alone in that opinion. Routine. Albert Young is tracked down. That's one of the better stops of the day for the Wildcats by Reggie McPherson. Let's go down to Rob Stone. Dave, interesting visual adjustments here on the Northwestern sideline now that this rain is starting to come down. Several players came over to the sideline corral the equipment guys and ask to have those clear shields taken off because once the rain hits it it impairs their viewing they're not doing it to everybody just the guys who are asking for it and mainly it's been wide receivers 
Well, we just had a few drops, and now they seem to have uh, stopped for the moment, but it's uh, getting darker by the minute here on the shores of Lake Michigan. How many flags? Four. Prior to the snap, false start, number 78 offense. Five yard remains second down. What happened? The left tackle got set, and Drew decided to audibleize the left tackle. Got a little goosey, jumped a little bit. Hold your water. Ace Richardson, just the second Iowa penalty of the day. They lead the nation in fewest penalties per game, less than four on average, second and 12. They take with three wides. Motion from Grigsby. After giving to Young, they take the end around, and Young only to the 12 after East. All right, Dave, Purdue hanging in there, as you mentioned earlier, still looking for that first Big Ten victory against Michigan State. Here goes Jared Boyd. He almost dropped the football, but he gets in to tie it for Tiller's team at 21. Minnesota now has gone on top of Indiana. They turned that turnover I mentioned a while ago into seven points. Minnesota, 21-14. Things tightening up all around the Big Ten. We've got 2.17 to go in our third quarter. And Iowa in danger of another three and out. They've got a couple already here in the third. Tate fires completed at Solomon. First down at the 25. That's a great job as Drew Tate drawing the coverage over by looking at Chandler. Getting the defense to flow that way. And Solomon sitting right at the chains. Tate without hesitation. Trusting the scheme. Trusting the plan. Throws a great ball. Watch him take a look over here at Chandler. See Chandler sitting down right there. He gives a nice little look and his head goes right back to his second option. Solomon, well executed. The continued growth of Drew Tate. Milton Solomon, who has been offensive player of the week this year for Iowa in a game in which he caught only two balls. That's what a downfield blocker he can do. And Scott Chandler, Ooh, nailed out of bounds by Nick Roach. Nick Roach hit the big 67240. And Demetrius Eaton. He says, you know what? Sometimes you watch some show, and sometimes you are the show. And right there, he's the show. A nice hit. Coming off his two best games of the year. Head against Michigan State, nine tackles at 12 against Michigan. He cleated him. He cleated him. Uh, wrap your arms. I'd really be doing backflips up here. Prevented the first down, second and one, 145 in the third. Albert Young into the secondary, first down, tackled by Trevor Schultz and Mark Weiss-Cole. Yeah, it shouldn't have had that many yards. McPherson's up there from the safety spot, filling the hole, but he leaves his feet on Albert Young. Albert Young delivers a wallop when he puts contact you on. Young, the... Former New Jersey Offensive Player of the Year from Morristown, just a sophomore. Got virtually nothing out of his uh, freshman year with a knee injury. Missed the final 10 games last year. But he came in today 132 yards shy of 1,000, and he's gone over. On that carry, he's at 134 for the day and 1,002 for the season. Timeout with a minute 10 to go. The second already used there yes. by Iowa, and they've got only one the rest of the way. The Big Ten is in such a scramble. Let's see what the top schools, Penn State, Wisconsin, and Ohio State, have the rest of the way. Penn State, first of all, they've got Wisconsin today, off week, and they close at Michigan State. For Ohio State and Wisconsin, number 14, Wisconsin, Penn State, Iowa at home and Barry Alvarez's uh, home finale and then they get to go to Hawaii and for the Buckeyes Illinois today Northwestern in a week and then the war with Michigan on the 19th in Ann Arbor and you can't be reminded too often how scrambled this picture is three teams with one loss apiece Three more with two losses. So there are five different possible champions right now. Well, Ohio State is playing really well right now. And Troy Smith has got his confidence, and Ted Ginn's returning uh, kicks. A lot of people in Columbus were waiting for this Ohio State team to come now. They wish they would have had it earlier in the year. We mentioned Joe Paterno and Michael Robinson, what they've done. 
Wisconsin's done it with offense. They're, they're doing it with smoke and mirrors on defense. Michigan is always in there. Iowa, great conference. Five teams left after today. Loser is out, Rob Stone. Well, yeah, postseason implications hinging on today's result as far as bowl games are concerned. Both these teams sport identical records. Both one win away from being bowl eligible. Representatives from the Capital One Outback. Uh, MasterCard Alamo, Vitalis Sun, and Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl all here to watch these two teams play today. Excellent fake by Tate. Chandler across midfield, another Iowa first down. 13 yards. This is a repeat of the success that they had. You'll see Chandler kind of chip, then sneak out to the flat and watch Roach get. Oh, he got sidewinded. But that's something that Iowa will do well. They find something that works and they'll come back to it. And license plate, by the way, number 81, Tony Moyaki, true freshman tight end. From not too far from here, Wheaton, Illinois. So first down, Iowa with its first extended march of the second half. Inside the final minute. And Young bottled up after a pickup of a couple. Hawkeyes and Wildcats both had put together three straight wins that were both ended by Michigan. I can't say enough about what Lloyd Carr has done in Michigan. Three and three, and Lloyd was under a lot of heat up there in Ann Arbor. And the players really gathered themselves together and showed a lot of heart to come back and go six and three when they were in trouble. Quarter will come to an end as the light rain continues at Ryan Field. Only points in the period from Randy Walker's Northwestern Wildcats. We will begin the fourth, 24-14, Iowa. College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturdays at 10.30 on ESPN. Light rain, overcast Evanston, Illinois. Dave Barnett with Chris Spielman and Rob Stone at Ryan Field. And Iowa starts the fourth quarter with a 24-14 lead and the second down and eight. On the Wildcats, 46. Again, the give to Young. Fake the end around to Grigsby. Albert Young hit by Eddie Simpson. As we look at our Napa game track. Young with the first two touchdowns of the day and has gone over 1,000 for the season. Drew Tate added the third Iowa score, his first on the ground, he paid with a bruised thigh and missed the first series of the second half. Tyrell Sutton, it's not really his kind of game. Wildcats falling behind early, he's been limited to just 14 carries and 55 yards. Wildcat defense had an encouraging third quarter, came up with a couple of early stops, now on a third and four. Tate forced to roll. And forced to throw it away. Out of bounds intended for Clinton Solomon. Good job of coverage downfield by Northwestern. They're playing zone defense, but instead of covering dirt, everybody jumps on a man. When you jump on a man, no matter how much time you have to throw, there's nowhere to throw. Drew Tate making wise decision, throwing a souvenir. Wildcats again force a punt. Mark Fillmore standing at his 10. Mark Fillmore. Andy Fenstermaker, walk-on junior from Mount Pleasant, Iowa. Again, hangs it up deep. Hopes for the right bounce. He gets it, and it's going to be killed right at the 10-yard line by Greenway. Let's get an update from Reese. Beat the Huskies. 1968, if I recall. Sutton. Again, even when he gets an opportunity, there's not much there as Abdul Hodge, the senior from Fort Lauderdale, Houston's 10th leading tackler. Eighth today after a gain of two. It's a good job of Abdul Hodge taking care of his responsibility and defeating his blocker one-on-one, -on -one, coming off and tackling a tough runner. Sutton, a very good player, very good football player. Bazinet, time to wait and throw that one away. Double coverage intended for Fillmore, but basically Bazinet just making sure it wasn't going to be picked off. It'll be third and eight. 
Norm Parker's kind of drawing some up over in the dirt there. He's moving Abdul Hodge and Greenway all around. That time Abdul Hodge comes from the defensive end. And like we talked about, Dave, one of the things that's happened in college football is they're taking linebackers that are good runners, fast runners, and putting them on the edge. Buddy's matching wits today. Mike Dunbar, the Wildcat offensive coordinator. Norm Parker, the Iowa defensive coordinator. As Bazinet rolls and tried to fit that one in for Fillmore over Edmund Miles. Yeah, not quite do. Yeah, I'm not sure I agree with that call. And the reason why they've had success on straight drop back passing, and Bazinet's worked all parts of the field. When you roll, you eliminate a third of, or two thirds of the field. You only have one third to work with. And Iowa did a good job of covering down. Three and out. And Larshide will kick from his end zone for the seventh time today. Grigsby expects this one around midfield. And Slade Larshide's marching orders are don't let anything be retired. Oh, this one has a chance. Although marker down. Back where the ball was kicked. You know, if you're rushing the punter, you've got to have the body control to stay Grigsby off the punter. The to the they hit him with 15 of it, too. Slade Larshide gets congratulations. Steve Newman will give us the call. Kick went 46. Charles Godfrey, I think, came in late off the corner. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker, defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. That's well, Charles Godfrey right here, number 13, is going to come in late and see if he's the one that's a little culprit. No, they get it from up the middle. Zach Gableman. Yeah, you have to be able to pull off. If you don't know you have a chance to pull off, and you should know you don't have a chance, Dave, if your hand's up high. You never block the punt, hand up high. You block the punt, hand down low, take it off the foot. So 51, Zach Gableman provides the Wildcats a huge break. Fields trying to make a move where there is none available. Abdul Hodge made sure. Now the range of Abdul Hodge shown right there. Out in space. If you want to play in the NFL nowadays, if you're a linebacker, you got to be more than a hole plugger. You got to be out in space and moving your feet. Good job of pursuing the football. Loss of two, second down and 12. Red Bassinet, finalist for the Unitas Award. All-time Northwestern passing leader. Throws it away, intercepted, and return to the 21-yard line. Matt Kroll, the defensive tackle. It's the first poor decision that Bassinet's made today. If you're going to throw it into a crowd of people, throw it at the feet. Don't throw it into the man's hands. Abdul Hodge comes off the corner. Kroll does not even drop back. Here's Hodge coming off the corner. Now take a look at Kroll. He's kind of just sitting, 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 almost playing a spy technique and does a great job of cutting in front of Herbert. Now Iowa has to capitalize. Red shirt freshman defensive tackle turns it over to Tate and company with the 21. And right away, Young looks for a cutback angle. There is none. Battle has done a pretty good job forcing the run. Coming up from cornerback, joined by Eddie Simpson. You're right there, Dave. Battle has been excellent. And he's one of the best tackling corners that I've done this year. Usually those corners come in and just want to cover and cut knees out. Battle's coming in, taking on the big man right at the knees, but he's wrapping his arms and defeating a blocker while he's doing it. That pick thrown by Bazadeh. Only his fourth this year. He's uh, perhaps put his team in jeopardy of falling behind by a margin they cannot overcome even with their prolific offense. As Young loses his helmet as he gets inside the 15 and sets up a third and three. Well, the field now enshrouded by this fog that continues to roll in off Lake Michigan. We could see the water in the first half, not anymore. We can't even see that lighthouse out there. Fog just a couple of blocks away from completely enveloping Ryan Field. He could barely make it out. Next to the lens, can't do it with bare 
Naked eye, I'm telling you. Here is the third down. And Tate rolling. Fires. Caught. Was he inbound? Gave him off. Incomplete. Battle with another hit on Grigsby. Well, Grigsby's got to have awareness, and this is a ball that he does not have to jump for. He catches the ball with his chest, and when he leaves his feet, his momentum's going to carry him out of bounds. See, he's, his feet are in the air. And he did not have to jump for that football. That, that ball wasn't that high where he has to jump. Just snatch it with your hands. You don't need to jump to catch it, but everybody wants the body catch. Snatch. Body snatch, not body catch. Schlicker to try a 32-yarder. Inside of 40 in his career, he has only missed once on 29 tries. And perfect here. 10.58 to go. Iowa's first points of the second half, set up by the interception by the defensive tackle from Mount Vernon, Iowa, Matt Kroll. Log on to 100yardblitz.com and enter today's code word, penalty, for your chance to win. Brian Field does not have lights. They play night games here only when they bring in portable lights. And you would never think, Chris, at 1.40 in the afternoon that lights would come in handy. It's so dark and foggy today, they absolutely would. I agree with you. It's, uh, you know, I, I would think the white shirts have an advantage over the purple shirts, but you just have to go to the pants. Bazinet's going to have to start looking at the white pants. Iowa has just not allowed much in the kick return Gerard game. Hamlet Gerard Hamlet. Short of the 20. Light rain okay, continues to fall. Lake Michigan no longer visible. And has really had a dampening effect in terms of the enthusiasm of the crowd, too. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that blue poncho thing, he had a three-for-one deal there. I don't, I don't know what the heck, though. Come prepared. You make do with what you got. Yeah. Poorly prepared. Preparation. Bazine after throwing the interception, which set up the Hawkeye field goal. Goes to the pitch to Sutton, knocked out of bounds by Chad Greenway. And that was that triple option again with a double pitch, one high pitch, one low pitch, or Bazine keeps the ball. So far, they've run all three facets of that triple option. That time he pitched to Terrell Sutton, the deep man. Greenway, Hodge, both on the Downhill slide of this uh, sensational career they've had, finishing up their senior year. Bobble snap. Bazinet has to dive on it back at the 22. Let's go down to Rob Stone. Well, guys, the running backs meeting room here at Northwestern littered with signs preaching the importance of ball security. One of the key principles is ball leverage and also trying to deal with the elements here as well. They run drills on how to hold the ball properly. They want, want them to grip the ball at the pressure points fingertips around the nose of the ball kind of like a claw uh, you want the ball on your forearm and the chest with that elbow down I know that's important for you Chris and closing the gate or the back door on it another motto win in trouble doubled up is in wrapping two hands around the leather third and six pretty much a must to pick this one up and a stretching attempt but Herbert can't hang on as they laid him out Sean Herbert almost brought that one in. That's a throw that I know Brett would love to have back. Herbert had to adjust. He gets two hands on it, and he has the ball in his grasp, but as his elbow came down and hit the ground, he didn't have ball security, something that the receivers maybe should go to the running back meeting room and take a look at some of those signs. Would have been a great catch. Instead, again, Slade Larshide to kick it away. 9.43 to go. Many positions uh, left in this game for the Wildcats, and the three and outs continue to mount. Two, maybe three possessions left. You figure a good roll down to the 20-yard line, a 57-yard boot. 9.31 to go. They're still celebrating Chicago. ESPN College Football presented by Nokia with 9.31 to go. Iowa at its 21-yard line will try to eat up as much of that as possible. With a first and 10. And they start with a burst by Young, who was one step away from taking that. 
seventy nine yards. It should have happened that way. Herschel Henderson comes up and is the on block player with nine guys in the box. Greg Colby can't draw it up any better. Albert Young makes a great one cut and run. And there's Herschel Henderson getting the shoelace just to get them down. See number 24. He's on blocks. He's coming in. He's coming in. Leaves his feet. Doesn't close the gate in front of the ball. And Albert Young almost had a big off. Gone. Five away from his career game. 13 there. Nearly a lot more. Tate rolling. Fires on target. The true freshman tight end, Tony Moyaki. Let's hear from Reese Davis. I love the uh, modern day PCS language of win impressively. AKA <laughs> blow them out. <laughs> Run it up, yeah. This shy midfield, first down. Back to Young. And with that, he's right at the uh, career game. And here comes a late flag. How about Young, the ball carrier? There's a face mask on the play. Brought down by Deontay Battle. I have two already. Flag on the play. Another run game tackle by Deontay Battle. Face mask penalty. Number 42 on the defense. Five yards from the end of the run. Demetrius Eaton. First down. Linebacker backs up to McGard. This is uh, an advantage Iowa has with the big offensive line and the running of Albert Young. Not only are they chewing up yards. They're chewing up that clock. The the left to the go. To go. Time's starting to tick Iowa. now, especially with the lack of enthusiasm, I'd like to say, as with execution, except for the first drive that Northwestern's offense has had since the second half started. Two score game right here, imperative Northwestern keep it no more than a two score game because they have not had a quick drive even when they have moved the ball. Young for a couple off tackle. Albert Young, the ball carrier. Near the eight-minute mark. Gill and Trevor Schultz. Winner stays alive on the play for Northwestern. in the Big Ten race. Losers out. Losers still one win shy of bowl eligibility. Randy Walker with a chance today with a victory to become the first Northwestern coach since the 30s with three straight years of six-plus victories. 1931, the last time anybody put a streak like that. Happy Waldorf. Way back in the annals of the Wildcat history. Robert Young, the ball carrier. Not long after him, the long descent began. Ended only the 10 years ago when tackle. Gary Barnett took over and continued by Randy Game Walker. On the play, third and five, Young Iowa. to the 35 and a third and five here. And even with seven plus minutes, Chris, this pretty much a must stop. Northwestern's not come up with any turnovers. That's been a specialty. They have 23 takeaways. Zero today. Offense has only scored twice. Defense in a position where they might have to chip in, but I was had none of that so far. On third and five, it's again Young, and Young with a first down. 179 yards now, a career game. The offensive coordinator, what they did was spread Northwestern's defense out to expose the middle of the field. They got a hat on a hat, and Albert Young is off and running. All he has to do is make one cut. He's going to get five yards. He's really been impressive to me. Fifth straight 100-yard game. We had that before the half today. And they have put this drive on wow, his shoulders. A couple more. Let's hear again from Reese. That first Big Ten win in sniffing range now. One thing you know, about a Joe Tiller coach team, they're not going to quit, Dave. Even though they're 0 5, they're going to play to the end. They always do. Second down at 8. New Tate intended for his fullback, Tom Bush. Tried to throw the big fullback a nice little bone there. Tom Bush is in there. Knocking heads with the big fellas. They want to give him the ball a little bit. And Drew Tate, in the time, you see Drew says, you're too deep. You're too deep. Got to tat it up, too. Can't be too deep and get tats. You got you to run the right route. Really? I never realized those two things were connected. <laughs> in my world, they are. <laughs> Precise patterns and tattoos. Six out of 12 on third down today. Iowa, they need eight. Absolute must stop at this point for Northwestern. 
Chandler went in motion. Tate rolling. And intended for Solomon, threw it behind him. Incomplete. Yeah, Drew's mad at himself because he says, I probably should have threw the change up instead of the fastball. And he throws it, he tries to drill it in there to Solomon. He really didn't need to. He just needed to let Solomon need to sit down a little bit. Dave, this zone defense as a receiver, you find a hole and sit. Solomon continued his route and thus Drew overthrew him. But if Solomon would have read the defense, he would have set instead of continued his route in the coverage. So on for a 41-yard try, Kyle Schlicker, who is hit today from 19 and 32. This time, however, he hooks it. And what could have been, for all practical purposes, the clinching points, not there. And Northwestern still with 5.35 to go, all three of their timeouts within two scores. Well, still hope for the Wildcats with 5.35 to go. Two-score game. Now, if the field goal had been good, it still would have been a two-score game, but you're talking about two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Ross Lane, nine yards on first down, and that's enough of a problem. But the other problem, Chris, is the fact that the last four years, Iowa leading after three quarters, 35 and one. Yeah, but this is certainly an offense that knows how to put up yards and put up points. Steve Newman says this is close enough to measure. Wildcats with all three of their timeouts, but they have had extreme difficulty by their standards sustaining drives today. They've only been able to do it a couple of times. They came in averaging the fourth most total yardage in the country, 515 per game, and by the length of the ball, Ross Lane has first down yardage. And just now do they go over 300 total yards. We talk about that 515 per game. The other thing that Northwestern has in its arsenal is the ability to run a hurry up offense efficiently. I and mean, that used to be part of Randy Walker's regular offense. He slowed it down since, but they do have the ability to go no huddle and get points in a hurry. As a day. Really laid out Fillmore that time. Antoine Allen. Looked like the ball Fillmore. slipped out of Bazinet's hand right there. And Antoine Allen, if he would have had his eyes on the ball, he's 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 dancing in the end zone. He missed that because Fillmore had to stop and come back. If Antoine Allen would have took a peek back at the throwing lane, he might have caught it and gone the distance. So second and ten. A little wide, but not that wide. As an A, in trouble, goes in the direction of Tyrell Sutton, and a third and ten coming. Pressure that time by Edmund Mine. Nothing to dispute what I heard of, from Mike Dunbar about a Norm Parker coach defense. They don't do a lot of different things, but they are never out of position, or rarely out of position. And Iowa's defense has done nothing to show me that anything's different. Dunbar's, well coached. Dunbar said more than that, but yeah. his old friend, he said, hey, Norm Parker will give you the game plan. <laughs> I tell you. It's not that involved. They just execute it very, very well. Sean Herbert steps away from the tackle, turns it into a much-needed big gainer out of bounds of the 45. Miguel Merrick had a shot at him. Herbert avoided him, went for 21 yards. Now, Herbert does a nice job here of, of using the underutilized stiff arm, in my opinion, especially by wide receivers. There's the high-low. Herbert sneaks underneath between Grant. Watch the stiff arm right there, just giving him enough distance to take it down the field and get out of bounds to stop the clock. Herbert, who leads the Big Ten, nearly eight catches per game, fifth in the country. Like the rest of the cat offense, limited today. Swing pass Sutton in the open field. Look at the spin move, two of them. Circle X, circle X button, wow. circle X button. He left first Merrick, then Shada in their tracks. And there's laundry everywhere after the dancing on that catch and run by Tyrell Sutton. He got nine. No huddle, second and one. Bazinet throws that one right to Adam Shada. 
A miscommunication there. Fillmore running deep. Bazinet apparently expecting him to cut the pattern off. And the third interception of the year for Adam Shada. We talk about being in position. Adam Shada is in perfect position. He's in for Joshua Johnson. He's staying in your position. Look at Shada playing Fillmore and playing the football. That's what you're supposed to do in zone defense. You feel the man with your body. You see the ball with your eyes. Shada does not lose sight of the ball and does a great job of getting his hands underneath the football. It's a great play and it's discipline. That one out right there for Adam Shada. Figures he turned in the smart play, the top football scholar athlete in the state of Nebraska. At Millard North High School, Omaha. Maybe the clincher at, uh, at this point up to the Wildcat defense with 4.27 to go. As the Wildcats use their first time out. But as the Wildcats already start some celebrating, let's get an update in the studio from Reese. All right, Dave, coming up on the College Game Day School Board presented by Acura, Lou Holtz, Mark May will be alongside. We'll tell you about the latest on Terrell Owens. He has been suspended. Michigan State and Purdue playing a shootout. We'll look ahead to tonight's Miami and Virginia Tech game. I'll tell you if that number one total defense of Miami can contain Marcus Vick. And the South Carolina defense is playing well, and along with, uh, with Rice, they're doing very well. Yeah, South Carolina and Arkansas coming right down to the end. The head ball coach trying to get the game. Cox in position to play in the postseason. Fellas, we'll see you as soon as you're done. All right, we we'll look forward to it. Miami and Virginia Tech look, Chris, so even defensively that not out of the uh, realm of possibility that it just comes down to which quarterback has the better game and there you got to really favor Marcus Vick strong over Kyle Wright don't you No, oh, I, I like Marcus Vick a lot I Kyle Wright does a good job Marcus Vick to me is awesome you see Albert Young 185 yards two TDs he's today's Nexium player of the game betters his previous high by 20 yards and he's still got work to do and room to do it Battle saves a huge gain. And let's send it down on the field to Rob Stone. Well, Dave, Iowa making a living and a killing out of recruiting high school quarterbacks lately. 11 are on the roster, including Adam Shada, who just had that interception, and stud linebacker Chad Greenway. Iowa likes to get them because they feel as a quarterback, you have a high football IQ, you're a leader, you're a trusted coach on the field, and typically, they're the best athletes on the team. They like to look past their high school positions and focus on how a player's height Weight, ability, growth potential would match up with new positions down the road. Well, there's just a very small handful of programs that know they're going to get Parade All-Americans every year. And I was improved the last several years, and they're in that group that, you know, every year I think can count on a, a shot at finishing in the top ten, but not necessarily every year in terms of recruiting if you measure it by Parade All-America. So what Kirk Ferentz does... Makes so much sense. You just project ahead and figure the guys that are smart enough to play a different position, as Chad Greenway has from Mount Vernon High in South Dakota. That state's player of the year, three-time All-State selection. Now, Chad Greenway has turned himself into a uh, pretty darn good linebacker in college football and quite possibly a first-round draft pick coming up this April. He's a big kid. He's 6'4", 245 pounds. and can run 4 or 5, as you saw in his highlight video from high school. Now, granted, he's playing in South Dakota. Do they, I don't even know if they play 11-man up there. But he was dominant, and that's that's what you have to do if you're Coach Ferentz. you got to find guys that are going to fit into your system and develop them. And certainly, Chad has developed into a fine linebacker for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Kirk Ferentz has this program. I don't know what maybe that is. with uh, an outside shot at a fourth consecutive New Year's Bowl. <laughs> FedEx Orange Bowl in 2003, the outback the following year, and the Capital One this past year, which they won on the final play over LSU. <laughs> Again, Young running clock brought down by John Gill. And another timeout which will clean out the Wildcats. Their final called at 347. We talked all day about the uh, wealth of ability at linebacker in this game. 
nominated for the Butkus Award. We're reaching the semifinal round. Chad Greenway and Tim McGargo. You know, a lot of good players on that on that list. Paul Bosluzny from Penn State. D'Amico Ryans, those are the guys that I've seen play. They're all, all excellent football players and smart football players. Rob? Well, smart football players are going to make a lot of money in the next level. Mel Kuyper told me Greenway, yeah, he's definitely projected as a first-round pick. His, his buddy, Abdul Hodge, second-round pick. In fact, there are 11 different NFL teams represented by scouts here at today's game. A lot of them got their eyeballs on the stud linebackers out here. And, you know, don't forget Mr. McGarrickle. I know, Chris, you like him a lot. Mel Kuyper raved to me about him last night. He called him a throwback player, an overachiever who's smart, produces, always around the ball. If his personal workouts show the athleticism and speed that those NFL guys want, he'll be an early day two guy like the fourth round. He's going to be one of those early day two guys when whoever picks him, Mel Kuyper's going to go, I like this pick. I like this kid. Good selection. Guy from, you know, reminds me of Stephen Boyd, a kid that I played with in Detroit. Very instinctive, always around the football. Drew Tate on third down and eight. Roll right, throws back left, and almost intercepted, which is pretty much a necessity at this point for Northwestern. It's a good call. They tried to sneak him play. They almost had it, too. Watch the tight end. The tight end's going to kind of hide, 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 and there's Chandler. He works right across. Schultz, he gets his hands up there, tips it up. Almost had a pick six. Eddie Simpson's dive about a foot short. Will it turn to short field over the offense to 35. Instead, Fenster Maker. Very short high kick. Take it. Or Fillmore, Take instead it. of returning it, lets it go another eight, nine yards. And it goes 42 with three in your area just a note on that game Dave is that you know John Stocko doesn't get a lot of credit but he's really upped his game and with those skill positions with Jonathan Orr and Brandon Williams they'll give Penn State a run today so first and ten Iowa able to tee off on Bazinda he's well protected and almost picked off again this time Miguel Merrick well, this is inches away from his second of the year. This is where Brett has to use his decision making a little bit uh, a little bit to his advantage and use his feet to his advantage. Mm -hmm. If there's a guy that's wide open and you don't have to squeeze one in there, take off and run the football. You have to take off and get positive yards. Abdul Hodge with a hand on that pass. Tipped it toward Merrick, almost gathered it in. 3.20 to go on second down. And Bazinet has got to throw it away. Both defensive tackles. Kroll, who has an interception, and Mitch King pressing in that time on Brett. Third and ten. Antoine Allen did a good job of shutting down Mark Fillmore over there working isolation. And shutting down nice, forcing Brett to throw the ball away. Because Fillmore was well covered, and Brett didn't come to a second option. I don't think he had a second option. Jonathan Fields looking for yardage after the catch and has it up for the first at the 34. That's what I love to see. You see Lane come back there, get a block for his buddy. Jonathan Fields not dancing around. In trouble. He doubled the ball up so he wouldn't pop it up. And pounded in there for the first. It's a good job by Lane coming back blocking for his friend. Rock rolling. No Wildcat timeouts. As a day, the deep out, and it's caught by Mark Fillmore for a game of about eight. Yeah, that, that answered the question for me on arm strength, Dave. That ball was thrown on a rope across the field on a line drive. The, 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 the discussion over. He has arm strength. He's built himself up to where he's got NFL size. I mean, he's not going to be the biggest quarterback if he gets to that level, but a couple of years ago they had him at 185, and it was difficult for him to even stay at that weight with uh, the injuries limiting his in-season weightlifting, but 6'2", 215, and healthy, he's been able to stay there all year. Thrown a little bit behind Herbert. That has been his most consistent problem today. Thrown behind open receivers. Yeah, it, it was thrown behind Herbert a little bit, but certainly catchable. I have a high standard for these, these receivers. Randy Walker called these receivers the best receivers he's had since he's been at Northwestern. Has a group, and when you throw one just a little behind, 
you get two hands on the ball, the rule is catch the football. I'm, I'm tough on that. <laughs> catch the ball, man. Unless that bone sticking out. <laughs> Third and one. On the roll. Time to look upfield. Decides to keep. Sees the marker. Runs out with the first down at the 45. So two things accomplished there. Another set of downs and stops the clock at 2.45. Something good the Hawkeye defense is doing is keeping all the patterns in front of them. And Northwestern's able to move the ball, but while they're moving the ball, they're using up clock. And they're moving it in very short chunks. Leading two scores. Fields at midfield. Got away from Miles, continues, and this the biggest play of the drive. They'll mark him out at the 28-yard line. Miles had a shot, but just was able to deliver a glancing blow, and it goes 27 yards. Well, that, well you got to be able to come up and deliver a blow. And Miles is going to come in here and not wrap his arms, and this, this is just poor tackling. There, there's Miles right there, and you're not going to tackle the man if you close the gate behind the ball. Put your body and helmet in front of him, so you can tackle with a full man, not half a man. First down, 237 and counting. Bazadeh going for it into the end zone and overthrown for Fillmore. Adam Shada, one series ago with an interception. The one-on-one -on -one coverage here. Adam Shada does a nice job of really boxing out Fillmore. He beat Fillmore to the route. He read the mail. He read his mail. He jumped in there, and he, 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 he ran the route better than Fillmore. So you're saying he earned the scholar yeah, athlete yeah, award in the state of Nebraska. At a great angle, and he jumped the route. He knew it was coming. He did a great job of getting his body between the man and the ball. On second down. Incomplete. Intended for Sutton. As Ryan Madison applied the pressure. And Stating the obvious, it's four down territory here for Northwestern. So they don't need to get the first down automatically on this third down. They can run a route that's five or six yards to put them in a position to succeed on fourth down if it does indeed come to that. See how the yards have come so difficult in nine plays, just a little over five yards per play, and they've gotten in one minute nine snaps up. Third and ten here. Bazinet open. First down grab. Well run pattern by Fillmore. Perfect pass. And the drive continues at the Hawkeye 16. They've been able to manage the clock with no timeouts. Their advantage. And those kids understand and, and getting out of bounds. They work the two-minute offense constantly in practice. That's a great throw again by Brett Bazinet. Tell you, when he misses, he does not miss by much either, Dave. Yeah, the misses, even the ones thrown behind the receivers, as you said, tend to be still catchable balls. And now the Hawkeyes use their final timeout. So they're close enough where you'd expect every snap, as they should have, you'd think, at least one guy in the end zone, maybe more. And if need be, he can settle for the short stuff. This drive has been pretty much nothing but short stuff for one of the top quarterbacks in the history of this conference. Drew Brees at the top of the list. All-time record, nearly 12,000 yards for Purdue. And following him, Chuck Long, the former Hawkeye from the early 80s. Mark Herman, the former Boilermaker, nearly 10,000, late 70s. And number four, with an outstanding chance, almost a certainty, you'd have to say, to pass Herman. Brett Bazinet, that was the number coming into today. He is right at 300 yards, 27 out of 46. One touchdown and two second-half interceptions. I see that big 46 number right there. Randy Walker would not like to have to throw that ball that much, but they've been playing catch-up all day. That's the reason why they'll have 50-plus attempts today. Ten thousand or so Hawkeye fans. Hoping not to have to sweat out the final seconds here. 221 to go. First down, 16 of Iowa. Keeping Bazinet inside the five, near the one. 
terrific call. Yeah, just getting ready to say if they wanted to run the football, they have it anytime they want it because there's three men spread out. Greenway and Hodge are both outside. Nobody covering in the middle. A lot of times teams will have an audible to uh, uh, a quarterback draw if nobody's in there. First and goal. And it is Sutton for the touchdown. There's the power of Tyrell Sutton again, just bouncing off. And this kid is something special. For being a true freshman, he's one of the most powerful true freshman running backs I've seen in a long time. And he just delivered the blow. Get off me. I'm going in. And he went in. All-time leading ground gainer in the history of Ohio high school football. Tyrell Sutton with his second touchdown of the day, 16th of the year. Second straight game where Sutton has really not had a full chance to show what he can do. He's about half his season average of 127 yards per game. 17 for 65, but the score here sets up an onside kick and a chance for Northwestern to pull this thing out. Hodge Greenway right there. There's nobody in the middle of the field. You have five on three blocking. Basney just able to take advantage of poor alignment by Iowa and watch Sutton. Get off me. I'm going in. And that's the power and leverage that he has. Those shorter running backs, those stocky legs, they run with great power. And Abdul Hodge had a shot at him. He just ran right through the all Big Ten linebacker. Yeah, you, know, you look at him down face to face on the field in pads. He almost looks like about a four-fifth scale Ricky Williams, yep. the way he's built with those legs. Yeah, he, it's just a tremendous uh, lower body strength, and he just he, he oozes power when he walks. And it's just, I guess you have to be a football guy to recognize somebody oozing power when they walk. Uh, he used power to me. He uses. Yep, he uses. So the drive covers in a minute 17, 12 plays and 77 yards. You can't execute in those circumstances much better than Baz and they did, Rob Stone. Well, Dave, place kicker Joel Howell took one warm-up kick for this onside kick. It was not one of those pop-ups. It was a drive it into the turf and hope for a good bounce. All right, the Wildcats. Down 24-7, but on a 21-3 run. Waiting for the big hop. And it is up for grabs. The Wildcats have the recovery. Ball spotted dead. The ball spotted dead. Deontay Battle. Reggie McPherson, 27, with the recovery for Northwestern. And they can pull this thing out. Man, that's a great job by Rob Stone reporting what kind of kick he's going to do. There's two where you can drive it on a line drive, or you get that good hop that you like to get. And the problem is Iowa has too many guys going for the football, not taking on the oncoming kickoff team. Usually you have two guys designated to catch the football. They had four hands jumping up in the air, and the ball gets batted around. Poor execution on, on onside coverage for Iowa, or onside uh, hands team. Tony Moyaki had a hand on it for the Hawkeyes, but it went to McPherson from the 47. Bazinet back in business at Fields for about four. Does not stop the clock, but at this point, if you're Northwestern, you almost want to run that clock because you've got time and you don't want to leave any out there if you score for Iowa. Both teams out of timeout. Better job by Edmund Miles of finishing the tackle right there, preventing the long run after catch. Flags here to stop it at minute 43. Remember, Iowa, the last four years leading into the fourth quarter, the record is 35 and 1. You know, you watch this game, you almost got the sense that it wasn't over. You felt kind of like that Northwestern, famous Iowa Northwestern snap. game. All start. Number 74 offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. The clock will start on the ready for play. That one on Dylan Theory, the left tackle. Again, what's at stake here in what amounts to a Big Ten elimination game for the winner? Their championship hopes remain alive, and they're bowl eligible for the loser. They're out of the running for the title, and they're still one win shy of a bowl. As in a deep middle grabbed at the 32-yard line. First down, Fillmore, hit immediately by Allen. You know, it's amazing to me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little bit critical here, but I'm seeing a lot of empty purple chairs throughout the stadium. And that's shame on you for leaving this football game and the type of team you guys have here in the offense that you have thinking this game was done. Not even raining anymore. 
Bazine looking for the deep out. And at the 25, Ross Lane. The clock continues to roll. Not a necessarily a bad thing either for the Cats. That's good composure by Northwestern. Nobody's panicking. They're getting lined up. They realize they have an eternity of time left. Fillmore's 10th catch for 123 yards, his fifth career 100-yard game. Mazinay will keep. First down, he slides to the 18. And is hit hammered. late. Yeah, Greenway hammered him. Greenway hammered him. And that's been a little battle going on all day. So obvious, three flags fly. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit. Number 18 defense. Half the distance to the goal. Down Northwestern. And for the least penalized team in the country, good heavens, could you have a worse penalty? No, and I've been in that situation, and the one thing you do not want to do is come with your head. See, Chad led with his head. If he would have kind of come over the top of him and realized the situation, he sees him slide, he's got to go over top of him. You have to run and make sure he does go down, but jump over him. Don't lead with your head. That's what caused the penalty, in my opinion. Clock rolls on first down and goal. Bazine. Throwing it intended for Sutton, never turned around incomplete. Hodge with pressure. Back in the second quarter, remember. Greenway did not draw a flag here. But this was the uh, hit by Iwebaba. That did draw the uh, attention of Bazinet. There was a long conversation in the first half between Greenway and the referee, Steve Newman. He didn't throw the flag, but he let Greenway know exactly how close to the line he was, and Greenway does not remember that conversation, apparently. Second and goal just inside the 10. To the end zone, touchdown! Ross Lane with his first as a Wildcat. It's a great call by Mike Dunbar and Randy Walker. What they do is they run a double in route, run high, one low. They clear out with the guy underneath, and Lane runs a skinny post. And you can see Brett Bazinet just waiting for it to come open. It does come open, and he does not blow his opportunity to make a big play for the loyal fans that still stood here for Northwestern, not the front runners in the parking lot. So for the extra point and the lead, Joel Howells, 28-27, Northwestern. Ross Lane's first collegiate touchdown. Red shirt freshman from Fort Myers, one Florida. Underneath, one on the skinny post. Drew the guy underneath, opens up the middle of the field. Strike! That's it, Brett. Should celebrate. Now, Drew Tate can go. Ooh, there's a little hip skip. Hip skip. Yep, there you go. One point. Gets, gets one. Gets one. This game was 24-7 Iowa at the half. 24-14 beginning of the fourth quarter. I'm with Drew Tate with no timeouts, 42 seconds to try and get the Hawkeyes into field goal position. And remember, they missed a 41-yarder, yep. which we said at the time would probably have wrapped it up. A red zone play, which they've only missed one all year. That's the second time they didn't score in a red zone. The other thing, Dave, point this out. I was come close to busting one here on a kickoff return all game. One yep. guy's been making the tackle for Northwestern on the kickoff team. I was been very close to busting one. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Whatever that means. I read you perfect. All right. Howells will tee it up. Young and Grigsby are deep. This is the spot where most kickers try the low bouncer. Try to make it as hard as possible to return. That's what happens here. And it's Albert Young to the 35. And they have 36 seconds remaining. Let's flash back to the Northwestern Penn State game back on September 24th here at Ryan Field. When Joe Puff pulled one out late, 34-29. 14 points in the last two. 45 here for Northwestern as... They accomplished what Penn State did in that game, which for the Wildcats, one of their two conference losses. So Tate 
going to work. And he starts with the completion of the 48 of the Wildcats to Grigsby. That's a great catch by Grigsby. Tate's pass is going out and laying out with his hands. And Slicker does have range, Dave. And Drew Tate, this is something that he thrives in. He loves being in this position. Slicker's long this year and for his career, 52 yards. And the long out, caught but out of bounds by Scott Chandler, the tight end, covered by Demetrius Eaton. Well, Demetrius did a good job of getting his hand in there, not looking back at the football. What you're looking at to get Schlicker within 52, you got to get to the 35, and that would have done it. 25 seconds left. Remember, I always feel obligated to point this out that in college football, the clock does stop on first downs. Tate, just a couple more snaps. And Champ Davis with the catch runs out and stops it at 20 seconds. Got a flag in the backfield. Ooh. So the least penalized team in the country commits its fourth on the late hit by Greenway, which sets up the go-ahead score for Northwestern at its fifth of the game. That's just one more than their average. But these two could not have come right. at worse times. It's a great point. You, know, you can commit those penalties, but when they come at key times of the football game, you're in trouble. And I do want to uh, mention the fact that, look, the middle of the field is still open for Iowa. Even though they have no timeouts, the middle of the field is still there, where they can get the ball down the field, clock the football, and have time to get their field goal team out onto the field. Against the last ranked defense in Division 1A, Tate. Again for Champ Davis. And at the 48, stops the clock at 14 seconds. You really have got to take your shot to get Swigger in the field goal range right now. And again, you're, you're talking, if you want him to match his career best, the ball has got to get as far as the 35, and that's 14 yards away on third and nine. He has the leg. He missed the 41-yarder, which would have wrapped this thing up by hooking it. Yeah. No, against Penn State, Northwestern blitz. They played man coverage and was burned for it. I guarantee you'll see them in a zone defense right here. Four-man rush. Tate throwing on the run, and his target slides Tate's down. Clinton Solomon incomplete. Eight seconds. Fourth down. You do have time for one more play. That took six seconds. So you do have time for one more play. And it wouldn't be bad to go back to that play because he's wide open. If they do not get it then, which are, if it's incomplete, it's fourth down. You got to go and try to get to your field goal range right now. This not is the quandary, though. Do you have time? with eight seconds to get only a field goal pass. Do you have to throw end zone here? Tate looking for the field goal and bobbled and that will do it. Herb Grigsby can't make the catch. Iowa, for only the second time in the last four years, will lose a game they led entering the fourth quarter. What a comeback by Northwestern to eliminate the Hawkeyes from the Big Ten race. Dave, you pointed something out. Early in the game, you said that look at the Hawkeyes. They're starting to celebrate a little bit. They were hugging and smiling and having fun. And this Northwestern team, they will not quit. The quality of kid that comes to Northwestern never quits. And that's a, a credit to Randy Walker and his staff and a credit to Brett Bazinet today, by the way. This is the Wildcats' 10th win the last two years in a game decided by a touchdown or less. As they close with a 21-3 second-half run to knock off Iowa 28-27. Northwestern still alive in the Big Ten at 4-2. Bowl eligible at 6-3. Randy Walker's third straight year of six or more wins down to Rob Stone. Coach Walker, how in the world are you so calm right now? Well, I'm not on the inside. I tell you what, I'm just so elated for our kids. Um, I'm on the verge of breaking down. And we have special kids here. We never quit fighting and we keep playing. And there's a lot of football left in every game. Where was the turnaround point in this game? Well, we just hung around and they didn't put us away, you know, and we didn't play well today, but we just kept hanging around. We make that onside kick and that's pretty big. Coach, we appreciate your time. Thanks Thank so you. much. Appreciate it. 
Northwestern still in it in the Big Ten. Iowa's out, still not bowl eligible. 28-27, a heart stopper for the Cats. Coming up, Illinois and Ohio State. For Chris Spielman, Rob Stone, our entire crew. Dave Barnett from Evanston. Let's send you to Ohio Stadium in Columbus and join Eric Collins and Andre Wade.